Welcome to the 2023 IFSC World Championships in Bern, Switzerland. It feels like the build-up for this event has been going on all year and finally it is here. My name is Matt Groom and it is a pleasure to be joined by ex-athletes, multiple gold medalists, Olympian, Shorter Coxie. <laughs> Shorter, how are you doing this morning? I am absolutely great. I am so excited to be here. Like you said, it feels like this year has just been building to this moment. So yeah, thank you for having me. I am excited to be here with you and I just can't wait for the climbing to start. We've been checking out the boulders you just saw on your screen. The audience has been filtering into the stadium and we are almost ready to get underway. And do remember if you want to check out highlights from this competition, the World Climbing Club is available on YouTube so make sure you subscribe. Now Sean, at the audience we can see them there waving Swiss flags. Tell me about the atmosphere in the stadium this week. My goodness, the qualification rounds I think had the best crowds I've ever seen at a qualification you could not move in the qualification of the women's boulder last night and I think that hype is just building and building and you can feel it through the first couple of days and now we're in the main arena and yeah I mean you can see right here how busy it is already everyone is just kind of you can feel the energy you really can there's a buzz in the stadium that is our boulder wall 20 meters long and you can see the different angles on the wall slabs on the left overhangs in the middle and on the right hand side and Sean some pretty interesting boulders and if you can see where it says 15 degrees on the left there's a kind of a hold that blends into the climbing wall it's something that I have never seen before <laughs> Sean what do you think of that no texture right Absolutely no texture, and it's an, yeah, it's entirely see-through hold. Um, we were joking that they should have put some fish or something inside there so you could see. But yeah, I am interested to see how the athletes get on with that, what their opinion is of it. Um, it's definitely going to make for some interesting attempts, mm -hmm. I'll say. Successful, and I expect unsuccessful. And of course, the athletes will not have seen that hold before this. So when they walk out to the mats, that will be the first time. So yeah, as you say, it's going to be fascinating. Four boulders on the wall, and we're looking to whittle down our 20 semi-finalists for tonight's final. So that's to come. And you can stick with us throughout the entire couple of weeks for lead, speed, boulder, boulder and lead, and of course, para climbing that's taking place. Now, Sean, at this start list, uh, Max Kleesel climbing last, uh, sorry, first because he qualified in last position. And of course, you're Team GB, so we are entirely neutral here in the commentary box, but there's a couple <laughs> of names you'll know very well, including Toby Roberts there and Jack McDougall, who come up his first semi finals. Yeah, it's so amazing to see both of these guys absolutely crushing it this year and gonna try my very best not to be biased um, but I think you know we've got a really strong mix of different styles of climber in the semi-final and the boulders themselves are a great display of different kind of techniques and abilities so it's hard to say who they're gonna suit but yeah I think there's a couple that I think Toby will get on well with a couple that I think Jack will really like so we'll see if I'm right in a little bit yeah and of course a big Japanese presence a big French presence in the semi-final and uh, Serato Anraku will climb last he qualified in first position and of course we're giving away Olympic tickets at this event there are 10 available and the podium finishes for Boulder uh, and lead, sorry, combined, they will get the <laughs> tickets. But of course, this is part of that preparation because the athletes need to do well in these individual events to qualify for the Boulder and lead. Exactly. So you've got the Boulder taking place now and then the lead separately, but your results in each of the two events count towards that combined result. Um, and then the top 20 athletes will go through to combined. Then we'll get the top eight in finals and the top three will be awarded that Olympic ticket. In speed, it's the top two. So yeah, this event is very important, but also regardless of whether you qualify here, your points from this event count towards the Olympic qualification series, which is coming next year. So not just those top athletes that are qualifying at this event, it's really important for all the athletes who are trying to get to the kind of golden event at the end of summer next year. Exactly, and the emotions have been high here in the stadium. I don't think I've ever seen so many tears after a qualification <laughs> round. Just It just feels like everything has been intensified this week. And of course, for these athletes coming up as our buzzer goes off and uh, Matt runs onto the stage, it doesn't feel like a normal World Cup here. The pressure is on. Definitely is, and it does feel like the World Championships generally amplifies everything. But then you add that Olympic pressure on top of that, and I do feel like you can feel the tension in the stadium. Well, we are underway, finally, for our first broadcast. Max pulls on to M1. 
Perhaps one of the easier boulders, although it doesn't look it. Very powerful, tiny feet as he drops in with the left hand and then bumps up to the right sloper. So his left hand's done a really good hold, but you can see it's slightly blocked, so that's why he's wiggled his heel in there. Yeah, slaps up with the left hand and falls down. Good first attempt, though. And if you're new to competition climbing, do not worry. We will go through all the rules, but the uh, basics are pretty simple. You start at the bottom, you finish at the top. The starting holds are indicated by the blue, I think they're blue lines uh, at the bottom, and we'll have a look on that as the camera turns around. I'll show you more. It's easier to describe it as we see it. There you go. So it's uh, pink, pink tape indicating the starting holds. Each line of tape indicates a different limb. And then you finish on the top, and on that boulder, it's on the right of your screen. And it's important to note that the starting tape, so it's yeah, two hands and two feet, and you need to have control. It can be very fast, but it needs to be a controlled. So you see he's in control, and then he moves. So if, if he were to be moving or not be in control there, then the judge would call him down. So Max was in that control position. He's underway. A little bit higher on the sloper, but still not managing to stick it. Legs swinging out and, and perhaps needs a bit more body tension on that move. Well, interestingly, it's um, from seeking to the setters, I believe it's been set as a one, two. So you hit the first slope and then you pull through to the, the second, which is the zone. Um, so you want to hit like really quite fast, whereas we've been seeing Max go quite slowly. I think the first one is not very good, so it, it looks like he's struggling to be able to kind of create some tension through that. Um, we'll see if he changes his beta. He's got the heel in, which means he's going, kind of trying to really create that tension. Uh, so maybe he can make it work on that slope, but it's a very steep wall, as we can see here. It's great to have the angles. Um, and then we go fast to the zone and then plant our foot on the wall to kind of stop. And that big I say we, they. they. I, we are not doing that. <laughs> I definitely are. You, you definitely could, but I would, uh, I'd be falling off a lot. Yeah, and there's a big blue panel there on the top right of your screen. No texture on that at all. And there's two of those panels actually on this boulder wall. First time I've seen that in a boulder semi-final. There was a, a panel in the Velo World Cup for the lead recently. Let's see if Max does this a bit differently this time. Up with the right hand. Yeah. He's looking to do it more dynamically. Ah, perfect. So you see he opted to not put the heel in, which allowed him to go way quicker. So he's planting his foot on the, the left hold, and so he can really get a lot of pressure, but it's got to have to be fast because it's not a positive foothold. It's big, but you can't kind of claw in on it. So yeah, he wants to get that big pressure through that, loads of power to get the height, but also the sideways movement, and then his foot hitting the wall, his right foot's going to kick into the wall to stop his hips from moving, and hopefully get enough strength through that right arm to stay on. And you could see the smile in his face as he came down that time. It was like something oh, clicked in his head. You can see it head. right now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, you've been in this position so many times. <laughs> what, what does that feel like when you, when you sort of like figure it out, although you don't do it necessarily? Mm -hmm. Is it just sort of a bit of a weight being what lifted? What you'll see is when they, when you see that smile and they figure it out, the head will turn immediately to the clock. Because the worst that can happen is you can figure it out with 10, 20 seconds to go. And it's that frustration is, so hard to manage, but you know he he smiled because he figured it out. Looked at the clock, smiled again because he had enough time to put into action what he thinks now will work. All right, well he hasn't got a zone yet, so no score on the board, and the time is ticking down. 49 seconds to go. Oh, so close. Now, although Max touched that zone hold, that's not going to count for his score, is it? Because you have to control, you have to use that hold. Exactly. Um, you want to make sure that you're you're using it. So that means that although he touched it and he was moving, he wasn't using it in the direction to climb. He wasn't putting kind of weight through it. He didn't do any other body movements off it. And um, so unfortunately that doesn't count for him. He definitely made progress. He wasn't quite close to holding the move on the last attempt, but there was definitely positive progression on the climb and he knows what to do now. He does. Oh, but he's opted for the other beta, interestingly. Uh, yeah, he's got that left heel in. And it's a no-go for Max, perhaps burning out a little bit, maybe not having the power to go for that jump. Yeah, and I do think we might see someone do that method that Max was trying because he was a little short then. Um, he came up a little short on the, the first slope hold, but I think someone taller or maybe putting more power through um, could definitely make that work. And then the tension on the left heel, even with the blocker in place, I think we could maybe see someone do that. Well, I was about to say, uh, height might come into it, and at that moment, Adam Andra runs out to the stage, one of our taller <laughs> athletes, so perhaps he might have a little more reach if he attempts that. 
Yeah, Adam just squeaked into this semi-final. He was right mm -hmm. down at the bottom. I mean, job done for him, but he'll want to improve a little bit if he's uh, trying to progress into that finals. Yeah, and on social media, you know, Adam's been chatting about getting through each round, and like that's been the goal to kind of tick each box as he's going along. And this is a long event, you know, so I think kind of getting through to the next round is ultimately kind of where you want to be. Um, I know Adam will be wanting to be in that final, you know, he's where he belongs, anywhere he thinks he belongs, and he should, so he should. Yeah, it's good to have him back. He's picked and choose uh, competitions throughout this year, really aiming for this World Championships. He returned in Prague, his home country, and he goes for the paddle, gets it into the zone on his flash attempt. And look at that right foot, though, slipping on the no-tex. Oh. Up to the top, a quick match from Adam. He gets it done. I almost started clapping. And <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of getting absorbed in the, this atmosphere around us. What a... Absolute lesson Adam just gave us. That was incredible, isn't it? I mean, you watch Max sort of do well, but not that well, and then mm -hmm. Adam comes out and does it, and it looks like a completely different boulder sometimes when an athlete does something like that. He definitely seems to have stepped it up from qualifiers. You could see in the way he was holding himself. You know, he walked out, he, he meant business, and um, yeah, he definitely showed us how to do that one. I think, interestingly, um, I think the setters were expecting a really quite big powerful movement for the last move hitting the final hold um, whereas Adam had his foot quite high and managed to make use of that no texture part of the foothold. Well this is a replay of what we just saw because it was a sort of blink and you miss it from Adam <laughs> dropping in with the left hand blocked of course so he's got to be precise right foot up into the sloper. It's a bad hold that right hand. Yeah it's not great isn't it? He's trying to get that thumb involved but it's right on the edge of the no tex and then powering off that left foot. So incredibly precise with the hands and the movement. You see his hips, his body was at the perfect kind of length when he hit those holes, so there was no extra movement. Great I, flexibility. I was about to say, I didn't really spot that mm -hmm. uh, when we saw it. That's incredible. Which I think Adam. maybe is why the root setters were not expecting that. No, I don't think so. The athletes do sometimes surprise them. They try to test all eventualities, but of course, the athlete's job is to break the Peter and do things that they don't expect. And Adam. I don't think we'll see many people doing it that way. Adam is one of the taller climbers. Um, to have both the flexibility and the, the length to be able to kind of split across those two footholds, I think, is not going to be something we'll see um, many times again, maybe. No, the, um, the only one I'm looking at is Paul Zemft, who will come out later on. Mm -hmm. he, he has that style where he sometimes does crazy things with his legs. So maybe Paul, but you're right. I don't think we're going to see that much. Now, let's just let you know how the, uh, the system works here for the semi-final. We start off nice and slow, just one athlete at a time. But by the midway point, we'll have four athletes climbing together. And then we wind things down towards the end and Serato will be by himself as we finish off this broadcast. And tonight is the men's final, so join myself and Shauna for that. And if you are just joining us, hello and welcome to Burn. Where have you been? You've missed Adam Andra crushing. <laughs> and we have... Yeah, rewind. <laughs> yes, exactly. Go back to the beginning, watch that again. <laughs> and there is the audience who have been filtering into the stadium this morning. A nice, easy start to the day. The audience on the left and then that middle line there, you can see that's where the coaches are with the iPads ready. Judges in front of the stage and then the mats, of course, with the brushes waiting patiently. Speed wall on the left, lead wall on the right of the stadium. And we're 56 seconds away from our next athlete coming out. So, Shona, what's it like for you? I mean, obviously, you've been competing on these stages for years. You retired, mm -hmm. um, and then you come back into the commentary <laughs> box. When you walk into the stadium, how do you feel? Do you get that like flutter in your hearts that you used to have? You know what, I still do. Um, and when we were up on the stage earlier, checking out the boulders, it was kind of took me back, straight back to those moments being stood on that stage for real, um, competing myself. And you get that little tingle in your tummy and, I don't know, I, I miss parts of competition climbing, but I absolutely love watching it too. And you know, when you're competing, you don't get to kind of experience much of what's going on around it. Um, and then this past few years, since I stopped competing after being at the Tokyo Olympics, I've just watched every comp and been so absorbed in it. So now to be here, it's absolutely amazing. Well, we get a little shot of Max there waiting backstage. <laughs> the camera picking him out. 
eight seconds transition period, and that will become important later on when there's lots of athletes on stage. You want to avoid them bumping into each other. But here we go. Max and a certain Alex Magos run out onto the stage. Mm -hmm. And Alex, I think people don't realise this about Alex, because and he always jokes about it, the fact that he's not used to making Boulder <laughs> semi-finals, which kind of blows I my mind. I don't know how long he can get away with saying that for. I agree with you, because <laughs> he's, uh, he's made a few now, hasn't he? Definitely considers, considers himself a lead climber, though. Yeah, one of the best climbers in the world, outdoors and indoors. And had a really impressive lead season so far this year. Well, it's our first look at Boulder 2. Yeah, so more powerful, overhanging, and a bit of a step up from Boulder 1. Max trying to get that left heel involved with his hand. You can see the blocker put in by the setters to, to try to prevent that exactly. heel hook. And the root setters described the first as powerful electric and the second as powerful basic. Ooh. I don't, when they say electric, I never quite understand what that means. It's no, I had no idea. But no. I'm, I mean, Adam just showed us, hey? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it is just that dyna dynamism. That's not a word, but you know what I mean. It's uh, it's just the power. It's involved, dynamic. Isn't it? It's D exciting. It's risky. Yeah, it is electric. All right. So Alex has a look on the right at that panel. Max is on the right of him. Interestingly, we're seeing two of the three German men that made it through to this round. The German team sent three men here, and all three are in the Boulder semi-finals. Busy day for the coaches. Mm -hmm. though. So Alex, left foot on, gets the paddle this time, that left hand clawing onto the sloper. We've seen him set up, now he's looking for the foot. Oh, he's going for a palm. Wow, that was incredible. What a unique move, Max. Oh, and he knows it, he knows it. <laughs> you saw him check it out, a moment of hesitation, then he just launched for it. Exactly, you saw his eyes darting around to decide what to do. Does he go foot, does he go hand? Oh, really, really close for Max there as well, a blocked hold. Yeah, so Max is left alone on the stage. I think Alex got that done in a couple of attempts, so good work from him. And yeah, completely different. When we watch Adam do it with that uh, really flexible um, move with the legs and then Alex using the palm, it's good that the boulders can be done in different ways. You know, speaking to the route setters, I didn't hear them say that they thought that that was an option, which is so fascinating because you know, the route setters, they're there trying to think of all eventualities of what might happen on the wall, and then climbers come out and do something different. And I think, you know, it's one of the beautiful things about the sport is that there isn't one path up the wall. There's so many different ways. Um, people can express themselves and their styles, and that's one thing Remy was saying, the route setter, that he wanted it to be a set of boulders for people to express their different styles and preferences. And as we move through the round, we're seeing two powerful boulders at the start. And then, I don't want to spoil it for what's to come, but they're very different to the first two. They are indeed. That is all to come. And it's exciting stuff here. We're seeing Max go for a different method here with a high heel, which looks really solid for him. Yeah, he and then into the blocked hold next. It's got to be very accurate to make sure he hits the bottom of these two holds. Really smooth work from him there. And very different to what was envisaged. Yeah, that left heel. Oh, that's the hold, oh. and you can see as the camera picks it, he fires off it. Very slopey, not a positive crimp up there. Not what you want. Not what you want, no. And he's just one hold below the zone, so he's yet to put a score on the board, even though he's done a lot of climbing and fought really hard. Yeah, and of course, he's got Alex on his left, and he would have caught him out the side of his eye. He <laughs> knows that the other athletes are doing those For first sure. climbs. You, you really know, and I think now that I'm a retired athlete, you know, I realise like when you're on the wall, how much actually you're taking in. Um, and I think, you know, you, you're not allowed to stand and watch the other athletes, but if you've got good peripheral vision, you know, you can't help but see what's going on. Um, and if you turn to see the clock, you'll see again. So it's, it's definitely something you're very aware of. Yeah, so Max is going to have to dig deep here, the pressure ramping up for him. It's really impressive the way he's figured out this middle section. It was set to be a, kind of a really slow campus. So you hit this black volume as an intermediate, go again to the yellow, and then the vision was for kind of dangling straight down, kind of really controlling the hips to match in, and then a hard move out. But Max is making it work with heels and tension and clamping. He'll be squeezing between both feet when his heels are up to make sure that he's got lots of strength going through his, his adductors, working really hard to stay on the wall. And you can see, definitely working hard because he was tired out there. 
He was, so Max calls it a day. Nine seconds to go. We'll throw back rest in the backstage area for the athletes. And this stadium we're in here is, is a pretty massive structure. And in fact, there's two buildings. The qualification took place in a different building, and there's a tunnel that links the two, <laughs> which I haven't actually been in the tunnel yet. I haven't I seen haven't it. I haven't been in the tunnel either. I know. I want to see it. Maybe we'll sneak back there I later on. I think the on. athletes come through the tunnel from ISO through to here. They do. All right, so... Secret. Do Hyun Lee runs onto the stage. He won his first competition this year. And on the what right. a great year he's having. Oh, it's incredible, isn't it? And I like Do Hyun Lee because having known Zhong Won Chong for quite a while on the circuit and known that Zhong Won is kind of, he's uh, it, like a father figure to yeah, Do Hyun Lee. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. So it's good to see him uh, performing well on the world stage. Adam takes his time to read this boulder. Flash the first one. What can he do with this second? Currently sitting in first position. Of course, a lot of athletes to come. A 10-year age difference between these two athletes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's 30 and Doyeon is 20. All right, so see how Adam does this. Will he spot the slower method? Oh, wow. Huge right leg up. Again, Adam's flexibility coming into play here. Bicycling on that zone hold. Flexibility and style. Oh, he's upside down. He's going to have to do this slowly. Almost bat hanging wow. there. <sighs> I'm not sure we have any words. For this. And I've just to the left of the screen, we've seen a top, a flash of M oh, M1. Oh, yeah, so Adam drops the top. As you saw and said, on the left, you saw Doki on flash it. So it's uh, all go here on the stage. Wow, that went from zero to 100. <laughs> Such exciting times here. Adam gives a big brush of that black hole. All right, so let's watch Do Hyun Lee here. This was his flash go. So hits the right hand, drops into the left. And this is the bit that I want to see. How does he get through this zone so move? So smooth. Wow, yeah, just floating in. This first boulder is a boulder that requires confidence, and we've just had a lesson in confidence right here. You know, he was executing those moves with perfection, but no hesitation. And I think as soon as we see that hesitation in the athletes, it's often when you miss the hole, you don't quite hit it properly, your hips aren't in the right position. Um, but yeah, there's, that's what happens when you don't hesitate. <laughs> yeah, and another method for that boulder as mm -hmm. well. He was kicking with the foot rather than Alex Magos's palm down. Yep, I believe we've just seen the boulder as it was envisaged, as, the set, as it was imagined, you know, that was kind of, the style and sequence that the route setters intended. But you know, as always, it's great to see all of the different options. It really is. And what can Adam do again? We saw something pretty spectacular just now. He goes for the high kick again. This is a risky move. Whoa. As you can see, sliding off it. Yeah, a lot of people ask me that we should show uh, the beat that the root setters want to do on the boulder. And I'm always mm -hmm. a bit reticent to do that because we see athletes do some crazy things. And I always think it would be a shame if we, we just saw one method because there's lots of ways of doing these climbs. Of course. Yeah, I think it's definitely interesting the way it's intended because then you can compare. And that's one reason I think it's great that we are able to speak to the root setters to see kind of whether they've planned lots of different eventualities or if they have them in mind or if the athletes are coming in with surprises, which I guess always happens. Um, I think they know that they have often a method in mind, but when Adam Ondra comes out and does something like this, you've just got to take your hat off to him. <laughs> I quite want to root set his reaction cam sometimes, <laughs> exactly. you know, just to see what they're thinking in moments. I think both confused and impressed right now. <laughs> yes. All if right. anyone is going to do this and make it work, though, it will be Adam Ondra. It will do. So he's got the toes in. A stick this time. Look at that slowly wow. dropping down. Messi's well, super controlled here to be accurate. Now he's not on the yellow hold. He's slightly beneath it. He might want to bump that hand in. He doesn't need it at the moment. A big fall from Adam. Checking out the clock. Now the edge of the erect, the edge of the boulder wall, hasn't got any black tape on it, which means theoretically the athletes can use it, but the setters were saying how it just doesn't really help that mm -hmm. move. So when looking at this boulder, I wondered if it was a palm down on the zone to go to the last hold, so you go right hand again, or whether you match in to the higher black hold and then go right hand to the top. 
Um, the setters have said it's a palm down, which is what we saw Adam trying there. So I believe the yellow hold um, on the black, so the second to last, is actually a blocker. So he's not trying to aim for that. He's trying to go for the black. So his first go, it looked like he went for it, realized it wasn't, wasn't going to work. So that's why we saw him on his second attempt stay nice and low. Yeah, so he made that adjustment. Yeah, my mistake. I thought it was uh, like a bump up mm -hmm. into the yellow. All right, Adam calls it. Eight seconds to go. He's already got a top and a zone. So standing up on the uh, top spot. Let's see this again. Yeah, that was the hold I was thinking he was going to bump into, but you're right. He's just committing to it. Almost it sat. It does look like you should, for sure. Oh, you just saw a foot slip there. That's why you walked off with that frustration in his face. You can see it right there. His eyes flip. That's The foothold is really terrible. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, the frick. Uh, on the, the holes themselves always surprises me because when you go to a commercial gym there's more friction on those kind of holes than these holes sometimes and although it looks big and good on your screen they're not very good in terms of sticking to it yeah that can definitely be the case sometimes and it, it's hard to imagine and really understand the level that these climbs are at because people are always asking what grade is it like how hard is it and you know, some of these climbs might not be as hard as you imagine, but doing them on this stage in that pressure is one very different ball game. But also, some of them are way harder than you could ever imagine, especially with the methods that we see. Exactly. Well, Julien Clemence from Switzerland comes on to a big reaction from the crowd, as you'd expect. And, Shauna, we were talking about Julien before we started here, kind of coming out of nowhere mm -hmm. in terms of results. Yeah, so this year we've seen him at two World Cups. He's placed 51st and 63rd. So, yeah, kind of stepped it up for his home world championships. And what a place to do it. What a place to do it indeed. And the Swiss crowd really getting behind the athletes. But right now, this is Max. He's going backwards, looking for that rotation move that we saw in Innsbruck for the first time. And I think we just saw in his face that he realized maybe that wasn't, wasn't the way. It would be really cool to see that work, though. It would be. Look, Alex goes up into the slope, and he does this campus method. And explain to me that, because you'd think that not having your feet on would make it harder, and yet it's a body position thing, isn't so it? So it's all about where your weight is on the hold. So with a sloper, you want to have your weight nice and directly below the hold to make it kind of as good as possible. And then when you introduce the movement, so we're going sideways. If you leave your feet behind, when those feet come off, it's just going to pendulum you right off the wall. That's why you see Alex bringing his hips directly below that hold, matching, and then trying to go out right. All right, Julian jumps up, nearly holds the zone hold. Knows what to do. He does. This is the move you're talking about, it's so wait underneath him. Exactly. So his first go, you saw his hips twist and go quite far right, which didn't allow him to be as accurate with his hand as he wanted to be, so he missed it. There he slowed them down, it looked like he slowed them a little bit too much, so he didn't quite get the distance. So it's just kind of finding those really fine margins. I can just imagine the athletes sort of calculating things in their head, like numbers Honestly, spinning. Honestly, it just, it's so subconscious, and I believe it will be for these athletes too. It just all happens, and articulating what's actually going on is so difficult and something I've spent a long time trying to learn. Um, I come from a huge family. I'm trying to explain climbing constantly. I watch comps with them all the time, um, and they love watching them. I've seen a lot, but yeah, I've been try trying my best for many years to explain what goes through my head on the wall. <laughs> well, you're doing a fantastic job here for this. Max faces the wall this time, different Much style. Better. Yeah, weighing control. Allowing him to be much smoother coming into that zone hold. So you can see as soon as you start to use that hold, his foot's moved. Now he'll be awarded the zone. I would expect a very risky foot swap, but it worked. Here he wants to get his left heel in to create a, create a balanced position. Toe would work too. Yeah, we're seeing that here. Yeah, now he has to stand up, bump over to the left. Slightly off balance as he did that. Yeah, so he wants to, as he leans to the left, he wants to stay quite high so he can get the weight through the hand. And then the foot will kind of pressure into that volume to allow him to get more pressure into the hand. I'm waving my arms around as if everybody can see me what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's coming across, don't worry. <laughs> Julian brushes the uh, sloper before the zone hold and has a look up. And apparently that hair, the, uh, the hair band, hair band, whatever it's called, sweat band, that thing is very uh, Julian. He's a uh, he likes that it's a style. style exactly. Like it. It's good. Teeny tiny first foot holes. They're just there to get the start position. Wide compression into narrow compression here. That left hand is a really good hold, but again, it's blocked, so it's such you're getting the heel in. One, two, yes. All right, final move. Let's see what he does. He's got to commit to something here. He goes for the Adam wow. kick. 
and missed it the first time he, with the right foot. Yes, well, we saw Adam go static to the foot, but we have seen other athletes go fast. But he's the first athlete, I believe, to go two hands. So great work from Julian. He leaves the stage. Really strong commitment. And um, I think we were expecting some falls on that last move. We were expecting it to be very high risk. Um, but so far, not been the case. Yeah, when they get there, they seem like, to lock it in. They want to hold on. Yeah, Alex slips the toe and we'll restart that. That will count See, as mind, an attempt. His mind was on the upper part then. Yeah, he had to refocus. Right, he's underneath. He's got 10 seconds. It's not going to be enough for Alex. Shakes his head and that he leaves. That slope is so friction dependent and because it's so bad, you know, it, it's a really terrible handhold. Um, so it's all going to be about position and kind of your skin and chalking up. We saw Adam take an incredibly long rest very tactically. Um, and when it comes to semi-finals, we really see the tactics start to come into play. Um, it's a hard round, you know, going from 20 down to six. It's it's going to be it's going to be tight. Yeah, it's a big cut for the athletes. And Toby Roberts is out on stage. We were chatting about him earlier. He's been penciled in as one of the favourites to take those Olympic places. And this year has been an explosion for Toby on his first gold in Brixen. And what a fight that was. Do go back and watch his last boulder if you haven't seen it. Kind of went viral on social media, but what a moment that was. It's a lesson in trying hard. Yes. And, and try hard is something that it sounds a simple thing to say. And yet I find the, the, the difference between people like yourself, like the top athletes, is that ability to unlock the try hard, to just give everything on the wall, and Toby does do that. Do Hyun Lee on your main screen, Toby falls on the left, and then Adam gets involved with the slab on boulder three. Let's see what Do Hyun can do here. Oh, so accurate, but maybe not quite in the back of the hold. Oh, look at that from Adam, the right leg creeps up the wall as he tries to find the balancing point. In true Adam style again, doing something totally different. <laughs> He's great to watch at the moment, I'm enjoying this. I feel like I haven't had enough Adam Andrew in my life this season, <laughs> so it's good to have him back. So Toby fell on his first attempt, he pulls on again. And you can see the scoreboard on the right of your screen. And remember, as Shauna said, we're looking for our top six. And Adam leading the way with the top and two zones. Toby not seeing the wide compression at the start here, it seems, or opting to just make the most out of that really good hold. <sighs> Misses a slap. Yeah, do you think his method is, is more tiring or, or perhaps better for him? It I think it's much of a muchness. You, you know, he's making it work. He doesn't need to change it. What we're seeing on the jump is he's not being kind of snappy enough. It looks like he wants to be a lot faster. Um, so he's kind of arcing his hips as he's going up as opposed to going straight up. Um, the arc will put more weight into the first hold, but we want to be moving we. I'm saying we again. He wants to be moving much faster through that first hold to get the second hold. Um, and then he can kind of create a bit of compression between the two. But yeah, we need to be a lot faster. I like the we. I, no, I think you're right. Because like, it's very hard not to feel, feel everything they're going through, isn't it? Yeah, you get sucked into this thing. I feel like I'm on the wall with them. I know. It's, yeah. All right, Dokyan looks for this crimp. It's not good, remember that right crimp? We saw him change his method there. He was squeezing with the feet instead of campusing and then going again to the zone. But I don't believe he'll be awarded that. Yeah, I don't think so either. Adam creeps over, finds the palm this time, and then drops the move. If he can make that work. I just, my lats tensed then as he yes, did that same. move in sympathy. Uh, much better from Toby. He looked like he knew what he was doing there. If he can get, he, you saw when he hit both of those holds, he was incredibly extended. With dynamic movements, you want to hit them with a little tiny bit of bend in the arm so you can kind of control that movement with your big muscles as opposed to try and dangle off your fingers. Um, but you want to get that balance perfect so then you're not got too much pendulum. Um, definitely tricky. Yeah, definitely Like the tricky. slap. <laughs> yeah, we're watching Adam there sort of mm -hmm, slip. Tricky. Bring the feet back in, he saved it. Now, come on, Adam, can he make this palm work? He's just got really sucked into that method, not opting for a foot swap and a heel, um, not trying to go slow. I wonder if he'll change it up with 
with not much time. He does look like he's getting close and being in that space when you know you can make a movement work, it's hard to then decide whether to try and figure out if there's an easy method because it's so risky. Yeah, and it's something we chat about a lot is when the athletes decide to change their mm -hmm. beta and with a minute to go, as you said, like you might be leaving it a bit late for that. Ooh. Toby getting closer on the jump. Left hand firing. I think he is keeping his body too far left, which is why his hand's slipping on the left hand. Massive uh, lock off strength from Dokian there. Look at this. Wow. Oh. It's one of those boulders that you think they're locked in and, and on it, and then they fall in the next second. It's, it's such fine margins on that boulder, too. All right, Adam slaps his thighs, tries to psych himself up as he runs up to the starting hold. One of his, well, will be his last go here. Needs to make this work. Creeps the right hand, finds the palm, holds it, and he's... Oh. Oh. I thought he had it there. And he will call it. Dohan's got five seconds. He goes down. He's already got the zone, so he'll call it a day. That was an exciting rotation. Lots of climbing happening. Some surprises. I'd say Toby not doing the first boulder is definitely a surprise. And it's going to be interesting to see if he can keep his head together now, kind of let that boulder go. You know, it's a hard, hard thing to do. And of course, the athletes don't have the coach's support when they're waiting back there. They're, it, does it feel quite isolating? Is it lonely sometimes standing there? Um, I mean, by the, the time I finished competing, it was a very, very familiar space to be in. And it's, I think, a space where you need to learn what's best for you in that environment. Do you have your headphones on? Are you totally focused in your own little world? Do you want to take them off, kind of absorb the crowd a little bit, get the feelings? Um, yeah, it's a hard place to be, especially if you're struggling, especially if things feel difficult. But it's part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, you, you've got to get used to it, haven't you? If you want to compete at the Olympics, for example, which will take place next year. Mikhail Mawem comes onto the stage, having a good competition so far. And Alex is on the slab. And I will never forget Alex Magos winning Quiff a couple of years ago with a finger injury by accident <laughs> <laughs> on a slab. So he's, uh, he's good at that. He's really impressive on the slab. Yeah, such good footwork from Alex. All right, Max has got the zones. He's on the scoreboard finally. And for the first time, we get to see this plastic clear hold, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean, look, I think it's a, a really nasty thing to shove on the wall. We're going to really enjoy watching this, but perhaps the athletes not so much. Alex creeps down towards the zone hold, and he'll look for this risky foot swap. Really controlled from Alex there. <sighs> And he gets the heel in, or tries the heel. So we want to, I think he'll need to pivot his right foot slightly to be able to make that work so that his body can move over. He's, so see his right foot didn't pivot at all, which I think was holding him back a little bit. All right, Mikhail. Eyes up this last jump. Oh, so smooth. Quick send from him. Three minutes left on the clock. Team France powering onwards. Now a second go. Impressive stuff from Mikel. Quick Look, work. Bumped up to fourth straight away on the leaderboard. Yeah, Boulder 1 is starting to become quite an important one mm -hmm. to send, I think. And we've not seen anyone get the zone on that boulder and then not get the top. The zone is quite high, so it's definitely going to be an important one. Yeah, so our semi-final starting to take shape in front of our eyes here. Alex makes the foot swap. Now watch this right foot. That's the one Shauna was saying you need to pivot on. Yeah, I'm wondering if he does. Just to allow his hips to move further left without him having to be so aggressive in that movement. He is going kind of the same style as Adam, that palm down. I almost wonder if Adam's left some chalk on the lower volume. So therefore Ad uh, Alex is getting sucked in. Because I think the vision was that they hit the higher hold with their hand and the lower hold with their foot. Yeah, it's a very good point that because sometimes the setters will actually put palm prints mm -hmm. on the wall uh, to sort of give the athletes a bit of a hint. So you're right. If you see that palm print, you might be thinking, well, that might that, that's, that's the method. That's the way, yeah. yeah. So fascinating stuff here. Two minutes on the clock. And Julien is into this tricky camper star section. That intermediate is an awful hold. <laughs> that, that <laughs> three fingers on the black volume. It's almost not a hold at all, is it? No. I don't really want to call it an intermediate. It's just a thing. Right, Alex again drops down onto the slab. 
making that. Oh, you've seen him move his foot a little there. See his heels slightly further away from the wall on his right foot now. It sh should allow him to get further over. It was more controlled, but still fast. Yeah, it's just overbalancing there a little from Alex. I do really like the start on M3, actually. There's lots of different methods to start, and I quite like the little run and hop on. Um, and I think we'll see many different ways of the athletes getting on. Yeah, and the start As hold it is, goes. It's one of those things you see on, like, root setter forums or on Instagram. <laughs> it's like multiple stacked jibs all together to make that hold. But quite positive. Yeah, a good sharp crimp to start. Alex making a foot swap, look, casual now, gets the heel in, but this is the move that's proved tricky for everyone. Just can't hold that palm. Julien leaves the stage on boulder two. really love to see him try the, the different method, the left hand higher and the foot step across, but I'm not sure he's gonna opt for a different method. Again, I imagine he's feeling pretty close and there's definitely gonna be chalk there now, so it will probably suck other athletes into this method too. So it'll be interesting to see if anyone figures out to go back to trying that high foot. Yeah, Alex has got 17 seconds. So as you say, this has got to commit to it, hold it for a second. And I think Alex might be done. He's already mm -hmm. got the zone. And he has a little <laughs> a high five to Max who ends his competition. We didn't talk much about Max there, who was on Boulder 3. I think we'll see a lot more of that with the, the no texture hold. There's a Doyan Lee getting confused in the background. Toby waits. And yeah, Toby not finding a top on that first boulder. Now really needs to begin his competition. Mejdi Shark runs on. And again, Mejdi is one of those who people are penciling in for a potential favourite in terms of the combined later on, the boulder and lead later on. I mean, understandably, what a year he's had. Oh my goodness, two gold medals. And it's the maturity of Mejdi that I've been impressed with because before this year, he was obviously very good, but he had that, that sort of youngness to him, mm -hmm. which is a bad way to describe it. But he went away for the off season, trained and came back with a different headspace and it has been impressive. I'd almost say there's a confidence about him that, you know, I think confidence can go both ways, but he's kind of really owning who he is and his style and just climbing with such confidence and certainty on the wall. It's, yeah, it's incredible to see. It really is, yeah. Ah, we saw the, the foot there, so he adjusted his right foot quite drastically, which I do think will help him out. Yeah, Adam held that. What Clear hole for a second. Now he presses up towards the top. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, so that plastic hole, I can't wait to see more of that in action. Mejdi again drops into the compression move, but pops a foot. A little hesitant there. Yeah, maybe some nerves need to be settled for Mejdi mm -hmm. and for Toby as well. Yeah, trying that campus method, but almost missing the blocked hold. Let's watch Adam Andre again on this. So, up to the no texture. And I think that's the way to do wow. it. You can't hang around on it, can mm -hmm. you? Uh, but you, de you literally, literally can't, can't hang around yeah. on it. <laughs> and then palming up towards the top. Right. And I think Adam just did it. He did do it on Boulder 4. Waves to the crowd. Dokian Lee on your main screen is committing to this foot swap move. Side of the foot for him and then finds the heel, changes it into a toe. And he's looking for this kick to the left. Ooh, really close and Majesty's also up high on boulder one. And no one really dropping this so far, neither does he. Hanging up there, please match it, thank oh. you. <laughs> Always gets me. Oh, I hate <laughs> it, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, images of uh, other athletes who have dropped tops before like that. Let's see a replay of Adam's top then. So this was the press up, he dropped it the first time, latched the left. Great tension in his foot there. And really feisty on that last move. He wasn't letting that one go this time. Yeah, those shoulders straining as he matches in. Good and work, Adam. Doing the exact beta that was intended for the first time this comp. There we go. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Finally. <laughs>
<laughs> he didn't get the I mean, memo. he doesn't need his, he doesn't need to do the intended bit. He can do his own thing. Yeah, he does. But well, that, that was what what was planned. Adam's so good at that. I mean, if you watch outdoor climbing at all, if you watch any Adam Ondra videos, you'll know his moves. So cool to see it on plastic. And interestingly, he's a much more experienced climber than other climbers on the mats at the minute. You know, he's he's a lot older, and you, you're seeing that in his style and how he's trying the movements. That was great from Doki and Lee. So Wasn't same it? method, but you know, same kick, but different, way slower. No texture on this top, makes the match. Good work from him. Really, really great work from him. That, so you could see that he'd, he'd adjusted his right foot, which allowed him to go so much slower because his, where his foot is pointing, so his heels come all the way around, and then he can control his hips as he goes to the left, and that means he can get the weight through his hand and his foot, kind of balance that perfectly, um, and we're not seeing him kind of falling off in any direction. It's all smooth. Yeah, he made it look really good. Small adjustments, getting it done for Dohyun Lee. But Toby, with a big puff out of his cheeks, he's got 49 seconds and he needs to get something here if and he wants to progress. This is a hard place to be. You're alone on the mats. All the other boulders have been topped. You've not done the first boulder. Like Keeping it together now throughout this round is going to be really important for Toby. We're seeing him try kind of the much more basic method, not getting too creative with the feet here, just kind of trying to stay super strong. But that right hand is so bad. Yeah, be, hopefully we can get a closer shot of it at some point because it, it looks like a, a crimp on your screen, mm -hmm. but it's slopey. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a crimp, right? But it is a really bad one. It's not in-cut. And often when we talk about crimps, you know, we're thinking like small, in-cut, really positive. This is small, slopey, terrible. <laughs> yeah, not easy to hold on to. All right, well, the, you can see on the main screen the athletes being held, waiting for this moment. And Manu Kornu has changed his hair for the third time <laughs> in three days. It was blue, it then was. it was blonde, and now it's red. <laughs> Which I suppose, to be fair, French flag. I mean, you know, you can see what he's thinking. I like it. Yeah. Manu, with a bit of a niggly injury as well. But a first look on his face walking out onto that mat, he means business. He does indeed. It's good to have him in a semi-final. So despite that elbow injury, he's fighting on. We have seen him in one semi-final this year, but he's missed three as well. So some kind of results aren't very consistent, but that's been the case for most athletes. There's a couple that have stood out and been very consistent, but you know, this, the scene at the minute is really changing. We're seeing athletes kind of posting results across kind of all different grades, you know, it's... Yeah, well, it's exciting because coming to this World Champs, although there's a couple of favourites, we really don't know what's going to happen, and that's exciting. And yeah, you're seeing athletes finish in, like, 50s, 60s, even lower, and then coming into finals, so, yeah, it's kind of really open, it seems. Basically, what we're trying to say is you can't go away anywhere for the next couple of weeks. You have to stick with myself and Shauna. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Julia gets the heel in. Let's see what method he uses on this move. Adjusting that right foot, really good to see. So maybe the slow kick really out with the left. Oh. Slightly less control than Do Hyun Lee, and you could see he couldn't hold the, the balance on it. Yeah. And <laughs> the signs at the back from the Swiss crowd, they've been holding them up with the different names of the athletes. Alex gets through the foot. Oh, that's a Ooh. nasty fall from Alex. I think he's all right, but yeah, shake. Yeah, he's good. I think he um, had a little bit of a hand rip there. Looked a bit spicy. Did indeed. But strong work from him. He's not a fan of the the jumps and the swinging and the, the circus style, as he would call it. Um, but it's not stopping him on this boulder. It's really quick work at the start there, and I think now he knows what he's doing. He'll he'll be much more accurate with his hands on the top top section. I don't think we'll see Alex do what Adam did and keep his left foot in tension. I don't think he'll be quite tall enough to do that. So he will have to take that quite dramatic swing. But yeah. he's strong enough to hold it. He absolutely is. He gets onto the slab again. His low position. Have a look at him. Hits the no-tex. Drops in. You easily. wouldn't know it was no-tex. You really wouldn't. I mean, it, it, it's a big hole. It's a jug, right? But it's, it's but still... But the way Alex is holding it compared to some of the other athletes, you know, you, it, sometimes it looks like it doesn't have texture and sometimes it does. That hold is not changing. <laughs> no, it's not. A nasty <laughs> thing to put on the wall. All right, Julien again. More in control this time. Very Makes it work. controlled. The edge of the wall on the left is marked with black tape, remember, so he can't hold that. And that's different from the edge on the far right. Julian adjusts the right foot, aiming for the top. You've got to be slow here. 
He can't power up to it and he falls. Oh, so, so very close. He'd done the hard climbing. He just needed to keep it together. Yeah, the nerves may be kicking for Julian. Manu trying to bring the left hand in. I believe this is Julian's first senior semi-final. So what a round he's having. Unreal, isn't it? Yeah, there's a couple of athletes really coming uh, coming out of nowhere in this competition. All right, Alex does this press up again. This is the circus style move you were talking about. Let's see how he can work it out. Up with the left, just, but comes down. So I thought he wouldn't be able to do Adam's method of keeping the left foot. It looked like there he was trying to. So you could see he couldn't quite get the height and the distance because he was going much more controlled, much more smooth um, in order to try and keep the tension. So Alex goes again, he's straight back on the wall. Julian as well, he got through this move before, much more confident this time. Mm -hmm. You can see it in his face. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, but this is where he maybe rushed it a bit before. He's got to keep it together and he has got time, but he falls again. It looks like a very hard transition to come around that. I thought the hard climbing was over at that point, but his ability to move through those first moves, I do think if he can just get his hips in the right position to come around that last handhold, he'll be able to stand up. But yeah, maybe it's the, the nerves playing part. All right, Manu's in though, into the zone. Looks for the top hold, gets the shout of encouragement, tries the Adam method, drops back to the left, <laughs> goes for the big jump and the kick. And Manu Kornu gets it done. Six attempts. Great work. Oh, wow. Mika bumping out with the right. He can't hold That's it. Awesome. Alex is in statically. It's all happening. Oh, yes, and Julian as well on Boulder 3. It is all happening. Replay man is uh, having to work hard <laughs> in our TV I... truck. Ooh. So much action taking place here. What a round. What great boulders to showcase. It feels <laughs> like sport. a final, this, at the moment. It's, it's uh, exciting times. We're jumping around in our seats. I really am. I can't sit still. Let's watch a replay of Julian. Thank you, replay team. Let's see this, then. So he had a look, a <laughs> casual look at the clock. <laughs> Brought the right hand under. And let's see what he did differently. Just seems more in control, maybe more weight hips. on his feet. His hips came down underneath his hands there. Or oh, you can see him shaking away, but he gets it. Oh, that was a marginal top. Oh, oh maybe it wasn't. So he shook his head. So in the slow moment, it looked like he topped it. I'm not sure that will be awarded because it wasn't in control. Yeah, and we should mention the appeal process at this point because especially during the semi-final, do remember that these results are provisional. So the coaches can put in uh, appeals. Do Hyun Lee here bumping up. And look, the judges is calling him down. So the starting position, probably. Yeah, so she, see she's pointing over at the starting position. He's apologizing. <laughs> of course, wasn't intentional. Very, very quick work here. Nikolai Oh, Uzdik. my goodness. Well, we saw him in the European Championships in Munich last summer win there. And you can see what that meant to him as well. Yeah, huge moment for Nikolai. All right, Toby creeps over. We'll try to get a foot match in here. Can't really see his foot, looks down. Makes the bump. And now how's he gonna do? He's looking for the kick, which we know is hard. Yeah, Toby goes down, but he's got the zone on that boulder already. Dogan has a look at the no text when we were talking about it. <laughs> slicks down at that time. And look at the power from Mejdi as he tries to find it's the It's right interesting point. on Boulder 2, we're seeing a lot of the younger climbers stick to the very basic method of trying to dangle and campus, which is what is intended. However, the more experienced climbers um, and, and some others, you know, we're seeing them use their feet and utilize kind of tension and squeezing and compression, which seems to be a much more effective method. Um, and of course, Adam going is upside down. Yeah, I feel like his we own thing. Adam his own <laughs> thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, you're right. It's fascinating that, and the generations and styles of mm -hmm. climbers as well. Toby here. I wonder if he's going to opt for the fast method like he tried previously, or if he'll spend more time and be more patient in adjusting his foot. He's looking left, so it does look like he's going to try and go fast again. But I do think that right heel needs to move a little bit. He's moved it slightly more this time, but he is going fast. Yeah, and you can see the foot pop 
That right foot is not very good. And Dohyun really struggling Speaking with the no Speaking of not very good. Yes. <laughs> that hold is terrible. Yeah, and it's, it's the first time we've really seen an athlete struggle and slide down that hold. By terrible, I mean that it's terrible in that it's hard to hold on to. I actually think it's quite cool and quite fun. It's something that we haven't seen before, and it felt like a very... You know, it was inevitable that we were going to see that progression, and we've just seen a one-two to the top. Very fast, very, very strong in the shoulders to hold that. Yeah, and that bumps him up into the top position. So good work from Dokken Lee. The one-two into the top hold that he just did is so incredibly impressive because that last hold, it doesn't have a hold. It's a volume. It's a flat volume. He is just pushing between two holds, not holding anything. Great from him. All right, so Toby. God, there's so much going on in this. I can't really keep track of it. It's uh, <laughs> all action. Toby trying something different here. What's he? He's looking. I think he's maybe adjusting that foot. Yeah, had his head yeah, twisted. See him bumping, he's adjusted the heel. I'm going to keep talking about that right heel on this boulder for the entire no, comp because it's to so important. It's allowed him to go slow. Yeah, and you're totally right. And you can see the, the turn on it. So he just lost his hips there. They just stuck out a little bit from the wall. Climbing is all about your hips, always. Where, you, where your butt goes, you will go, you know? So um, if we see kind of the hips kink out from the wall, often we do see the climbers fall off. It's really much more obvious on slab climbing and dynamic climbing. Um, but I do feel like Toby's figured that method out now, and if he can keep that control and that tension in the right places as he moves, be patient. Yeah, it might be unlocked for him. Well, he's got a minute to unlock it. Something we're not very familiar seeing is Toby and Mejdi being the last two on the wall. Yes, it, it's it's certainly, I mean, we, again, pressure. You know, perhaps it's getting to those two. They've been, there's a lot of attention around them, a lot of media attention. When it comes down to it, you have to perform, and perhaps that's getting to him. Toby's in much better from him, but we know this top is droppable. And really great to see him keep it together. So Toby working Just hard now. Just be patient here. Spend that time getting the hips to the left so he can weight that foot nice and steady. 19 seconds on the clock. This is going to be his last attempt at this. He needs to get it right. Calm as the clock ticks down, but the buzzer's about to go for the... Come on, Toby. Right, Toby twists around five seconds. It's going to be a buzzer beater if he can do it. Can he hit it in control? No, he can't. Ah, oh, I mean, if he could have just touched it, but he went all over it, nearly hitting it. And that it. is exactly why there is no texture on that hold. It doesn't allow the athletes to go fast. They need to be in control. You have to showcase your best slab climbing at that point. It's not a case of holding on to anything at all. It's all balance. It's all footwork. And it's just a shame there was a buzzer counting down behind him because it did seem like he just needed a little more time to find that position. It's well within his capabilities. So Toby, no top for him. But his teammate, Jack McDougall, is on. And again, another athlete stepping things up here at the World Champs. First senior boulder semi-final. Jack coming from a big climbing background. And only 17 years old. Mad, isn't it? Like when you get someone who's 17, you get Adam who's a little bit older, and you, it's so wonderful that they can compete on the same That's stage put as well. A little bit older. A little bit older, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Manu Campus is way across, just missing the right hand. Jack is underway, and Mikel stands up on the slab. Drops down with the left foot. I love watching Mikel climb. His you know, you can feel his energy. He is so expressive in his movement and... <laughs> it was a slow motion fall. It was a slow motion fall. Almost held it, couldn't quite. Yeah, you're right. You can always tell what he's thinking and what he's experiencing Yeah, on he the doesn't mats. try and hide anything. No. I like that. I like that too. As a commentator, the, the more expressive the athletes <laughs> are, the better it is. I say that I was probably the least expressive athlete on the so stage I, in I, my I time. I never commentated you ever, so I... <laughs> I didn't have that, that, that pleasure, sadly. I think I just always smiled. I was like, if I just always smile, you know, then it'll always be good. And um, that's just what I went with. Absolutely. Well, it clearly worked, and I did Shauna. enjoy it. <laughs> Manu missing the intermediate there. Yeah, didn't need it. Slaps up. Didn't He's got the heel in. So we're seeing, again, an, one of the more experienced athletes trying to think outside the box, use those heels, just make the hold easier to hold on to. Um, but it's still a terrible hold. It really is. So Manu resets. 
We saw Jack there, he was very extended when he hit those two holds, really straight arms, not much left to kind of help control that movement. If he can get a bit more height, I think that will really help him, so a lot more power through the legs as he's, as he's pushing up. Precarious foot swap. Oh, I'm watching the heel. <laughs> so well, we're not there yet, so he needs to stand up first, get all his weight onto his foot. No, he doesn't. Well, he just kicks up, and that is intention from him to make that move work. He hit the two left holds so perfectly that he didn't need to do my little heel swivel. There we go, right, but he has this hard move to go. He'll have lots of time to get again. His left foot's on a jib, stretching up, thumbs under, oh, makes the match. Oh, wow, great work. You could see his right foot where it was planted. He could reach off that right foot, so he put it in a really great place. There isn't a foothold there. He's just smearing, so it's just where he chose to put it. Um, and just kept so much tension through his lower body to allow him to reach up there. Awesome work from him. He gets the top and leaves the stage, having a little look to his oh, right. Jack. So very close for Jack. Really cool to see him getting inching closer and closer. Yeah, he needs this boulder one. Remember, it's one. If you look at our top eight, for example, all of them have got this, so it's important. Definitely wants to get a bit more height to be able to control that movement, really get the strength going through his back so he can squeeze between those two holds. Jack. The right hand is quite good, but the position that it's in, it's not um, not easy to hold on to. I think we're just seeing there maybe um, a scrape on the leg, so he'll be bleeding. You're not allowed to carry on climbing if you have blood. Um, so just wrapping a bit of tape around to let him carry on. Uh, so he leaves the stage. Help from the coach. Coaches can do that. They can provide medical assistance, but they won't be able to give him any beta tips. Julianne spins off on your screen. And Manu again, but maybe getting a bit tired here. Yeah, so these athletes have no communication with their coaches while they're in this round until they have a five minutes in the call zone afterwards. Yes, great work from Jack. Opting for the Adam Andre method of the big splits oh. here. He is shorter than Adam, so I'm not sure he'll make this work, but he does. Oh, look how far his left foot wow. swung around. It, it was a huge, huge swing for that left foot swinging around. and. No stopping him there. It really wasn't. So Jack does what Toby couldn't do, gets bowled one, and that's already jumped him above Toby. So mm -hmm. fascinating here. I don't think I would have predicted that coming into the semi-final. So already a couple of upsets. Julianne hypes the crowd. Love to see that. Absolutely. So the home crowd, you know, look at it. Look how many people are here. Yeah, the stadium can hold 10,500 people. He's having a great time out there. Look at him, smile on his face. He's going again with only 15 seconds to go. <laughs> Why not? Why not, indeed? Uh, that's it. The bitter end. <laughs> <laughs> and a roly poly dismount to finish things off and about. Well done, Julian. I'm clapping you in a commentary box. Congratulations, <laughs> my friend. That was a good round. Really, really great round for him. Right. And some well, impressive climbing, too. Yeah, we take a deep breath in the commentary box because things are going Ooh. quickly. Halfway through, at least on this semi final, Julian gets out of the way. You can see French flags being waved, Swiss flags. And uh, exciting times for the audience and us here and you at home. And if you are just joining us, welcome to Burn. This is the first broadcast men's boulder semi-final. Myself and Shauna Coxie in the commentary box. And Paul Jemp is on stage for the first time. And Toby needs to finish things off strongly here. On stage for the last time on his final boulder. Uh, some immediate slip on that no texture hold. I think on boulder four, we're seeing what you what you would normally do is kind of hit a hold and like use the texture and the hold to ride the movement. Whereas with the no texture, you're just having to move very fast through it, and it's kind of aiding you a little bit, but not as much as normal. Yeah, good point. Paul jumps up to the zone, makes the fast match. Work. Now, yeah, I kind of expected that one, but oh, maybe not from Paul. You can see his brain ticking over. Does he kick the foot? Does he go for the straight jump? Remember, there is a palm available, but it's pretty crazy. He hits it with the right. Over the left first and then in with the right. Awesome from Paul. I love Great watching flash. Paul climb. I really do. So, Paul, job done. He leaves the stage. So, Jack's the only one who's got opted for the splits. I thought he might be a bit short, but he made it work. And then... Um, Paul was the only other one we thought might do it, so I wonder if we'll see that again. Exactly, proved me wrong, didn't he? So Paul <laughs> doing a different way. And Very confident climbing from Paul there. It is, I just, I, I do love watching Paul climb because he, he finds different methods, especially on the lead wall. Right, Mejdi on the slab. Trying to work out the hand and the foot swap. Gets the left in. 
looks down. Nikolai as well. We haven't talked much about him. He's on Boulder 2. Using the campus method. Makes the match and all his weight under him. Easy into the crimp, but then loses the left hand. But well, yet to see a top of Boulder 2 as well. Nikolai flashing Boulder 1. So it could be really good to see him on the upper section if he can make this mid section work. Yeah, it's a good point. Look at the scoreboard. The uh, the boxes go all the way, filled up to yellow for a top, halfway for a zone, so you can keep an eye on which boulders are the hard ones. Toby trying to get a different foot sequence. Slips again. It's definitely worth exploring different options if you're not feeling comfortable on the move that seems obvious to you. I think it's really worth trying to explore them. And then it's so hard to know when to come back to the method and which method to choose. Um, I'm seeing Toby go back to the jump there. Yep. Definitely need a little bit more feist, but Nikolai looking strong on that sloper. Oh, and misses the, the crimp straight up to the sloper. And that just explains how bad that crimp is. Yeah. Are because it, you know that slope is bad. It's interesting you talk about sort of like finding different methods because I see something you do a lot on your Instagram when you climb. It's kind of playing with moves, mm -hmm. you know, finding a boulder and then working out different ways of doing it. My, yeah, my absolute favorite thing about climbing is the movement and I'm just fascinated by it. And I think when I was competing, I would do very different movements. Great example of different movement, Mejdi being very bouncy there. And no, no problem at all on that last move. No hesitation. Really, really strong with the with the hips and the legs. Such great leg strength there. I'm so pleased you called him bouncy because I've been calling him bouncy for a while. So I'm glad that you agree. Incredibly bouncy. Yeah. Youthful. Yes, he has that. He's just got that <laughs> style. It's that new school style that um, does lend itself to some of these boulders. All right, so Toby, a minute 15 to go, has not had the round he'd want. He's outside at the moment. That was much better though, so it'd be really cool to see him stick that move, you know, especially having struggled on it to, to, to overcome that. Nikolai, just on the top of the screen there, looked like he was quite high up on Boulder 2. Yeah, he's getting closer. Toby's left, Boulder 1 and 3 have so been for, climbed. For Toby, we're seeing him slip quite a lot on that first hold, but what he needs to do is get a bit more power through the arms so he can get his hips up and over, really, really committing to that movement from the very get-go. So really feisty from here all the way through until he pauses on that move there. So see he's a little bit low on his arms. He wants to be nice and high in his chest. Yeah, and he shouted out to the crowd there, frustrating from Toby and a smile on his face. He's going to keep going, of course, but knows he's not quite unlocking this. Goes again. Snappy, but misses it. It's definitely important to remember, you know, these a lot of these guys, they were doing... Oh, just pause it. I was pausing there to see whether he could, Nikolai could take that move. That was incredibly close. Um, these guys, a lot of them were doing lead qualifiers yesterday morning. This is a long event um, for athletes like Toby that are, are here focusing on the combined, you know. It's going to be really important to keep that in mind um, for the athletes themselves. Of course, you want to compete in as many rounds as possible. They're here to be part of the event. Each round is, is a bonus being able to climb in it. But, you know, that combined and that Olympic ticket is a long way from now. Yeah, absolutely. And skin management, energy management, all of that comes Having into play. Having been through the Olympic qualification process at World Championships in Hachioji in 2019, and competed in many rounds of that competition uh, where I did qualify for the Olympics. Oh, it was exhausting. And, you know, I think it's going to be so important for these athletes to, to really reflect and pace themselves and be thinking about that as well. Um, of course, not during the round. Everyone's given everything. They, they want to get to the top of these boulders. They want to get to the top of those routes. Um, it's kind of when you come away and step away, it's going to be important to kind of take that time to reflect for all of the athletes. Definitely, yeah. And Jakob Schieber, well, he's an experienced athlete. He's done this many times before, and he's in good form at the moment. Qualified and high up on the lead wall yesterday. When isn't Jakob in good form? I love it when he is. I really do. <laughs> I mean, we said in the uh, Daily Show how much I enjoyed watching him, and look at this from Jakob. Swings over, makes the move to the zone, and he does the Adam Andra stretch. Palm down as well. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, Jakob's in form, I think we can safely say. That was a flash. Good work from him. It was a flash, and it was so impressive that he knew his body so incredibly well. He knew exactly how strong he could be through his limbs at that time. 
I didn't see anyone palming down on that last move. I don't think anybody else did. Um, or see that it would happen, you know? We've not seen anyone do that. I think off screen, we just had another top. Yeah, Hopefully Mi we can see that. Yeah, Mikhail got it done. Jack into the slope, adjusts the right hand, weight underneath his hips, and slides off. For Jack there, it looks like he's really struggling with that sloper because it is so bad. So I hope we do see him try some heels and some trickery to try and help him get his weight under to get out to that crimp. And so Manny stands up, legs crossed. Left foot on that sloper. It's been slightly stacked if you're a route setting uh, geek, as <laughs> many people are. So by stacks, you mean there's a small yeah, hole underneath? there's a underneath. jib underneath pushing yeah. it up to make it a little bit flatter. So palm down now. This foot mat, very important. You've got to be precise. And trying to get some friction with the side of the foot. Drops it in a bit quickly. And I think he was overbalancing and committed to that move. Mm -hmm. Man is another one. You can see the emotion. You can, there's no denying where he's at and what he's feeling in the moment. It's a fun one to watch, is Manu. All right, Jack launches up to the sloper. We saw him there with a, a toe on the start hold, really clawing in, so pulling with his toes, with his legs. Right, well, we didn't see it earlier on. This is Mika doing M4, so nice moves flowing through towards the zone. On his second attempt, I believe. Yeah, left Very hand. fast work. Yeah, good hold with the left hand, palm down. Oh, wow. So he jumped, hit the second to last hold, hit the last hold, and his right foot, all in one movement at the same time. We talk about new school style. He's not one of the younger climbers. He's 33, but we are seeing new school right there. You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> it can be done, indeed. <laughs> right, man who's uh, alone on the stage, I think. Is Jack still there? Can't Jack's see. still there. there Jack's still is. going, yep. So Jack is a minute 23. At either end of the stage though, so kind of got their own zone. Yeah, this is good to see that he's really trying to figure out different ways. Great creativity, you know, trying to do that match really, it didn't look feasible. It looked so, so, so hard for him, but he's thinking outside of the box. It's really, really cool to see. Yeah, he's climbing well at the moment. Brushes the hold, makes sure of the friction, looks back up at the audience. Man, who runs up to start. Great footwork from him. Bumps down. As we know, easy starts comparatively, and it gets harder and harder as it goes on this boulder. Watch that right heel if he rotates through it. Doesn't need to. Doesn't need to. Keeps the tension so strong there. His hips were glued to the wall. Absolutely not falling out at all. Gets the knee involved. He's Always. got a wrestle on his hands here. Yeah, this is a fight. 26 seconds. He knows this might be his last chance. Wow. Breathing heavy here as he, he'll try to find that jib for the left foot. He's not on it yet. Now he is. Pops and goes. So close. Ah, oh, Manu, yeah. Head well, that, down. That's why we love to watch him climb. You know exactly what's going on in his head. But the audience respond, they'll lift him up for that final climb. I can't believe we've still got seven climbers to come out. Yeah, I know, my hands are so sweaty, oh. I, I need water here in the country box. I'm losing all of my body <laughs> fluids, it's gone. <laughs> right, exciting times, we have this transition. And that is Meichi Narasaki. You can see him as he enters the stage, brother of Tomoa, of course. He'll be out just after him. Yeah, you're right. Exciting, the two brothers together. Paul Jemp on the right, Nikolai is on, and there is Meichi. Much different sort of body type from his brother, and it's, I find it interesting, because they must train and climb together mm -hmm. quite a lot, but such different styles, those two. Definitely, yeah. We saw Meichi kind of get stronger and stronger through the seasons as well. You know, Tomoa kind of burst onto the scene, was incredibly successful, whereas Meichi's definitely got better and better throughout the seasons. It's great to see. Must be really nice climbing with your brother alongside him in semi-finals. This is so cool, wasn't it? Right. Well, Medjdi bouncing up to the top. Exactly the same as um, Mikhail earlier. It's really similar movement. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and you could see how much that means to him, hyping himself up. What we would expect from him in that new style, you know, really confident, really bouncy. Cool to see. It like, is. It's 
incredibly impressive to be able to do so much at the same time. Yeah, all the limbs going in different directions. Also, at the top of the wall, you know, I find it pretty scary up there. But these it's guys, high. These guys do not make it look like that at all. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm always so impressed that athletes can fall from that height and, and land safely. You know, it's like cat-like reactions. You know, the higher you fall from, the longer you've got to oh, that's figure true, it out. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. All right, so Paul drops down. So Mechi and Paul together now, and Nikolai down at the end. It's interesting when you're in that space, you know, stepping up on the mats earlier and being there, you know, outside of competition, it's like, well, that looks like a scary move. And suddenly when you're in competition, you're just so absorbed in what you're doing and, and in the movement, you, you're not even thinking about all of that. Yeah, something a setter said to me once, which is, look, we test for safety, obviously, but sometimes you just don't know what the athletes are going to do, and they will do anything to try the top of boulder. And you see that every single round. You see someone do something that nobody else will think of. And I mean, the root setters, the coaches, <laughs> all the other athletes. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to predict every eventuality. I mean, Shauna, a lot of people are going to be asking after this if you're going to return to uh, the World Cup mm -hmm, of Coxie. I've had that question. Are you tempted now, having seen this stuff? No, I, I'm not, actually, and I'm probably less tempted because I love being on this side. I love getting to see it all, and the only thing I would really like to do is be able to get on the boulders. Um, so maybe one day that could do a little pre-session on the comp boulders before the commentary. That'd be great. I would love um, to see that. We'd love to film that as yeah, well. Yeah, no, awesome. that's what I would love to do. Um, and that's kind of the only thing that would tempt me back is how fun these boulders look. Um, of course, not these boulders. Um, well, you never know. The if, women if you send the watching. men's boulders, then you've definitely oh, yeah, got In fact, return. you know what? I would love to try the men's boulders. They look so fun. Um, but I'm really grateful for the time that I had and I'm absolutely loving being on rock and climbing on rock and spending time with my daughter um, who was actually brushing the whole head of the competition so <laughs> she's her favourite thing to do. She's played an important part in the semi-final, <laughs> she really has. Only the footholds though, she's not very tall, she can't reach very much. Definitely still counts, <laughs> the athletes will have to uh, give her a little tip afterwards. But yeah, it's, it's really nice to be here and to be back in this environment, but in a very different position. I don't miss the drama of it all and the stress and the pressure. Um, and you know, so much of that pressure is, is comes from yourself. Um, but yeah, I've been excited about rock climbing for so long and I'm excited to be able to be in that world now and absorb myself in that world without distraction and then come back into this world and, and really enjoy watching and experiencing it from a very different place. I also am the president of the Athlete Commission so I spend a lot of time talking about competition climbing and being involved in decision making and kind of getting the athlete opinion into the IFSC at board level so I spend a lot of time working on that so it feels important to be here and be surrounded by the athletes. We're running elections at the minute. I think it's our, our biggest elections ever with the most candidates we've ever had. So yeah, it's really cool to see the athletes kind of really stepping up and the IFSC is one of very few sports that has two athletes on the board. So yeah, well, it's great we've to just have seen the top on Boulder one from Nate G. Took him some time to figure out his his method on the on the jump. He was really close a few times, but great to see him get that stuck. Yeah, good work. And then Nikolai with the heel in starts to rock over. It's his shoulders came back, which pulled his hips back and then couldn't couldn't stay close into the wall there. All right, eight seconds to go. The athletes will leave the stage and we have another rotation coming through. Tomoe Narasaki out next. Brushes, grab the brushes and run on to make sure the holds are clean. There is an IFSC app you can download if you want to keep up with uh, live updates in terms of the scoring. I absolutely love the app. You can click on the climbers, check out their stats, see how old they are, their previous results. I'm imagining all the people right now who should be at work listening to us, and uh, it always makes me smile, that one. So if you are stuck in an office somewhere, I hope you have us in your ears and are enjoying this competition. Jakob Schubert on Boulder 2 and Tomoe Narasaki on Boulder 1. And Tomoe is someone, you, you would have been around on the circuit and seen him climb, such an experienced athlete. Of course, yeah. He's been... He's, he's very familiar with being in that place. He's been in many semi-finals, many finals. He wants to be in this final, you know. He's, he's out there to proceed to the next round. He'll be climbing with, <laughs> we've seen a great look from Manu there, sorry, interrupting myself <laughs> as he slips down that no texture. It almost looked like he didn't expect it. Um, understandably, I guess, it does look like no texture, but 
It's, it, it's still a surprise, right? It is indeed. And it's one of those holes I know. Oh, hang on, let's just stick with Tamara here. Tamara's showing his experience. A little bubble on the top there, but keeps kept it together. Look at that one arm at the top as well. Top celebration there. Nice one, Tamara. Yeah, it's, it's the dual text, the no text clear hold is one of those holes that I know the athletes might hate a little bit, but the setters will love it. We love it. Oh, hang on, Jack is in, isn't he? Jack loves a slab as he is demonstrating right now. Such control from him. Incredible movement. Right, he's got that left toe drilled into the jib, just the top to Come go. On, Jack. He's got a thumb under, needs to match it, shaking. And that should count, he certainly thinks so. It seemed like he was in a control position. I did see his hand go to the left a little bit, so we'll see. It, I don't think he was anywhere near the black tape, but importantly to know there is black tape on the wall that you cannot reach around it. It didn't look like he did. All right, Jakob is really alone. strong work from Jack there. Oh, it was brilliant, wasn't he? And look at his score as well, seventh at the moment. Let's see Manu, so he sent this off screen into the good hold with the left hand. Springy on that first move. He's yeah. gonna need to bring that spring here now. And we've seen all of the French now execute that last move with such precision. Little hesitant on the match here. He's just trying to figure out where his body position needs to be to make it work. Yeah, shouldery press, facing the wall. Then I think he's going to turn out. He is going to turn he's out. He's just having a moment, <laughs> as he should. He definitely deserves that. That bumped him up to fifth currently. Of course, we've got climbers still to come out. So one thing that's important to know, if you are following the results, it can be quite tricky to figure out what's going to happen because there are climbers who are still to come out that qualified really high. So they're the, the, the climbers that perform the best in qualification. So you would expect them to kind of come straight into the, the higher numbers, but that's not always the case, as I'm sure you've experienced many times. So, yeah, it's it's definitely worth refreshing the app nice all the time, keeping up to date exactly. nice and frequently. Just because you climb uh, in the first place, therefore last, doesn't mean you can't qualify. It's such a strong field here. Jakob is sitting in 10, only on M2, of course. Lots to go. Super powerful for him as he statics through. Keeping his weight underneath him as he'll look for the... Oh, he goes for the huge slap up to the zone. It's just really showing how poor that blocked crimp is, or that blocked small hold. And, of course, it will be getting... I mean, it's being brushed, but we've got a lot of athletes touching those holes. So a bad crimp contenders were a really nasty crimp by the time we had all that dirt and chalk on it. it. Yeah, and the brushing, you know, it changes the holes. The holes do change throughout a round. It's part of the sport. Um, it's also getting hotter, which is a really important factor. Um, and those conditions matter. Great look at that blocked terrible edge yeah well, that's we can't call it a crimp i mean you do need to be up on your fingers you are crimping it but it's it's not a lot not yeah. a lot there it's super slopey isn't it it's also interesting the way the angle of the hold so because it's angling the same direction as the slope you know you've got no opposition to squeeze together yeah, nasty hold and Jakob again decides to miss it shaking his head kind of looks like he's not really sure what is expected of him here yeah, and he's wiping his hands on his shorts, so that sweat starting to kick in a little bit. All right, for see photographer Lena on the right of your screen. You can check out her and Jan Vert's photos on the IFSC Instagram. So go and have a look at that for all behind the scenes action. I would recommend doing that as well, just to both photographers are really doing such a great oh. job of capturing the emotion, the, the atmosphere, everything in those images. And it's great to see on the screen, but the stills are also incredible. They really are, yeah. All right, Jakob hits the crimp this time, so different from him. How is he holding this? And you can see a huge fire off with that right hand sending it down. I see and here. Yeah, it was a nasty one, that. I was waiting, I was kind of waiting for it to go, because considering we've seen lots of people slide off, he mm -hmm. was putting a lot of pressure through that right. It looks like, you know, he's hitting that hole perfectly. He's in a really strong position, like through his shoulders, through his back. You can see that he's comfortable there, but the idea of moving looks impossible for him. Right, so the defending champion, uh, Kokoro Fuji is about to enter the stage. I talked to him during the qualifying. He said how nervous he was about this competition. Mm -hmm. And he's not competing in the lead. So therefore, the boulder and uh, lead combined he's, at the end, yeah. he can't do. So this for him is, is his everything. This is what he's is there everything. for. Yeah. Yeah. Actually saw Kokoro yesterday in the lift in the hotel and he was playing with uh, my little baby. He's, oh. got, he's a dad himself. So um, yeah, it's cool to see. A couple That's of dads cool. in the in the semi-finals here, Tamoa, Adam. Yeah, good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Strong dad scenes. Strong dad <laughs> scenes.
<laughs> Absolutely. Right, Paul on the slab. Let's see what he can do. What's his footwork like today? Hits the first move well. Nikolai jumps right and makes the move on the far right of your screen. We'll switch back to him in a minute, but right now, Paul. Great flexibility from Paul on that start there. Trusting that left heel. So you're seeing with Manu, he didn't pivot his foot, but he's kept incredibly close to the wall. Um, whereas Paul didn't pivot the foot and his hips came out. Very fast work. Yeah, from... Nikolai. Yeah, gonna Nikolai. So Boulder 4 proving to be pretty toppable. You can see on the scoreboard lots so far. And Kokoro. Nikolai completes his round with two flashes in fourth place currently. Yeah, that man can just pull something out sometimes. And all four zones, importantly. Good from him. And our, maybe our final starting to take shape as we near the end of this semi-final. Still some big names to come, though. Sam Avazu, who's done well. Yannick Floe, who's found some form. And we'll talk about his state of mind later on. But very chilled and calm this week. Right, Paul tries to stand up on that right foot, shaking. It's a precarious movement through this start. There it is. Positive hold on the start, but not very big. Very, 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 very small, actually. <laughs> Teeny <laughs> tiny. So that heel is locked in. In fact, he adjusted it then. Kicks out left, but the holding the tension is hard. Yeah, so he's not adjusting the heel. He's opting to keep his hips super tight, very similar to Manu. Um, but as soon as the shoulder pulls back or the hip pulls back, you're, you're losing that. Let's check out Nikolai on Boulder 4. And we caught it in the corner of our eyes, but it's nice to see it on the big screen. So here he goes, sets up for the no-tex, commits to it, into the press, just holds that. And I want to see the top of this climb. Goes up with the right hand on that jug, then has to match. I think that holds so good, they can kind of do what they want with it, the jug, but then this move, you can see his brain, his eyes flicking. Misses oh. the foot, but still holds it. So Ooh. powerful. He loves those kind of moves. All right, Nikolai, that was his story. He's left the stage now. Oh, yes, from Kokoro. Yeah, he won the World Champs before, and I remember calling him a climbing robot because of the power he had mm -hmm. with his lock-off. It was just like watching a machine. Such strength, yeah. Love to see and him And from Team Japan. I mean, the selection alone. I mean, it must be a, a logistical nightmare trying to work out who <laughs> actually gets into these competitions. So, a minute 42 to go. This athlete's on stage now, coming up to 11.22 Central European time. It currently looks like it's going to be super important to try and get a zone on the second boulder. Um, we're seeing the top three athletes currently have three tops, and I imagine you might need three to get through to finals. The route setters thought it would be three, maybe two. Um, it looks like it's going to be three. Right, so we kind of started to figure out what the athletes need to do and who our finalists will be here. Paul adjusting that left hand on the edge of the volume, matches it. He's looking to palm left, isn't he? Yeah, he's looking to go slowly. Great oh. to see someone trying something different. Yes, it is, and it had to be Paul Gemp. <laughs> he always thinks outside the box, but he loses it. Left hand slip there as he tried to adjust. But this is tricky now, isn't it? Because he's tried something different with a minute to go. So does he commit to that one? Does he go back to the original? It's all going to be on feel. So what did that feel like? Did that feel possible? Did it feel better than the other method? It's such big decisions to make. And, you know, try, like, having such a small amount of time to do these boulders, it just changes everything. Yeah, and do go and try that if you're at your local gym. Go and give yourself a time limit, see how much it changes things. It really does. We're even the luxury of being able to just try different methods and have half an hour playing around. Absolutely. Well, Paul kicked. So Paul did go back to the kick. So the par maybe not feeling right, but he's back <laughs> on with 11 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I think that's done for Paul. All right, well, he will leave the stage. Time ticks through, the audience applaud, and Sam Avazu is out next, and he's having a brilliant competition. Exciting to see him competing in lead and boulder. And the fourth French athlete to come out. Yeah, Team France, wow. Eh? What, what an event they're having. They really are. Oriane was down in the audience. She was in action last night for the women's boulder. 
So Jack runs on to his final climb. Jakob's on M3, and then there is Sam in the black in the middle, and Tamoa is on M2. Yeah, one thing you don't see so much um, whilst watching the stream, but you really get a feel for when you're at the events, is how much the teams support their own athletes, but also the other athletes. There's such a buzz with the with within the athlete community. Um, you can hear, actually, I don't even know if that was an athlete. It sounded like it screaming behind us there. Um, yeah, it's it's so amazing to be absorbed in that. Yeah, that's what makes our sport special, I think. Wow, wow, that was incredibly well held. Okay. Yeah, he's in well now. <laughs> I didn't want to speak too soon. So good with Sam again. Oh, look at that huge jump from Sam. That's such confidence to do that kind of a move like that. Mm -hmm. And a flash as well. He almost doesn't know what to do with himself. Yeah, is that it? <laughs> And the judges holding up the scores there. And it, it, it's funny that because it, in the sort of like world of electronics, I quite like the fact that it's still written down sometimes. So the you know, I really look at like it. it. I like the fact that it's very obvious. Yes. You, you, there's no second guessing. When you're in that space, there's so much going on. You can just look, check that it's all good and, and go back to your own zone behind the wall. Right. Sam almost didn't know what to do with himself after that top. The, him sticking... That dyno, the way he did, he slapped into the no texture part of the hold, kicked out to the no texture part of the foothold and was just sliding around, um, but made it work. He did, and Jack is also sliding around. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that hold isn't, I mean, I know it sounds obvious, but it's not taking any chalk because it's, you know, there's no there's no friction on it, but it's, it's unusual to see athletes not brushing a hold. It's kind of a very different. Yeah, it's almost the, the, the opposite. You want um, some like rhino and spit or something sticky on your hands to make that work. Well, that is the thing, isn't it? It's, people have told me that they, you do if it, a little bit of wetness in your hand makes that mm -hmm. no text work. Yakov's in though. Look at this. Not uh, normally a fan of the slab, but it is not slowing him down right here. No, it isn't. Brings the right hand under. He's got to be careful with the feet now. Creeping upwards, slowly, slowly does it, Jakob. His tongue sticking out in concentration. Left hand on, right hand's coming through. It's not there yet. Now it is there. And that's it, we think. We'll wait oh, and see. Oh, you can see what that means. <sighs> Jakob Schubert is in a roll, and it is exciting to see. We've seen him be really specific in his event choice this year. We've not seen him do a full season. Um, leading up to trying to qualify for the Olympics to be part of these combined events and um, gaining points if he needs them for later events. But, you know, he's clearly peaked here and is on fire today. He is. It was great to see him in Innsbruck as well, performing well. Interestingly, he is missing the zone on the second boulder, despite a lot of climbing and a lot of effort. But I don't think we'll see him slowing down on the final boulder and could be enough. Yeah, I'm looking at the scores now. It's like two, yeah, you need two tops, at least two zones at the moment. Right, Tomoa matches in. <laughs> this is a move we've seen Tomoa do, but he commits to the heel. He's just trying to think outside the box, doing things differently because, you know, he's, he's hit that hold already. He knows it doesn't work to just hit that hold and be super basic. Um, so... I think we'll see him trying a few different methods now. And Jack making progress on the movement here. Just needs to, you want to get enough power to get to the finishing position and then stop. Yeah. And what's going to make you stay on the wall here is everything stopping and being in control. We saw Nikolai really fighting it. But if you can kind of get that body movement perfect, it looks like that. There we go. And he <laughs> kicked that right foot out in the space to control. And now let's see this. This is the exciting bit of this boulder. He launches upwards, but kind of oh. gets caught up. But yeah, I got a little stuck. It looked like his right foot maybe hit something. Yeah, and you hit could the hear wall. it. Just lacking confidence there. Um, and experience too, you know, like this is an amazing round for Jack. If he can repeat that move, which is something again that comes from experience, being able to execute the same move once you've done it again. Um, but all incredible experience building for Jack at such a young age. Yeah, and he's just outside of that final place at the moment. And it's worth saying, there's uh, microphones behind the wall. So when you hear these kicks, that's why we can hear them. And it's really cool to hear. It does feel like Jack knows this could be super important. This would bump him right up. And it's, it's he's, he's low when he's hitting that hold. He's not high in the hips. He'll be very frustrated with that. He didn't get to have a good go at that last yeah. move, which is something he's capable of. 
it's an amazing round of climbing and I hope he can see that. It's going to be frustrating because, yeah, that was very, very close to being three tops for him. It's great to see Team GB coming on because there was certainly a, a time after you retired where it sort of dipped down a little bit and now we're seeing so many athletes coming through and of course people like Molly, more experience mm -hmm. is still there. And Molly yesterday making semi-finals, the best result. Um, what an event to do it in. Yeah, yeah squeaking it in, in 20th place. It's really, so cool, really cool. Her. Now, we've got some appeals underway, haven't we? Yeah, so I can't tell you what the appeals are, but on the app, if you have it, if an athlete is highlighted in yellow, it means they're under appeal. So that'll be another team will be potentially appealing a decision that was made by a judge. So whether it was on a top or if they touched something out of bounds or didn't start correctly, or it could be their own team appealing for a decision again on a judge that they don't agree with. Um, once they go back to white, that means the appeal will have been resolved. That's an update on the app. This is Yannick Floe who tried the stretch, going for the launch. Now His foot there did not hit the hold. No. His foot was above the hold, it hit the wall. <laughs> Not that it mattered in the slightest, it just showcases how strong he is. He dropped down, super focused, picked his choke back up, and off he's gone. Yeah, good work from him. And Very little reaction, because I think it was an, an easy day, easy moment for y um, Yannick on that border there. And Meichi as well, with 3.50 to go, is looking in control, makes the top. More and more as time goes on, it's looking like we're going to want those three, you're going to want those three tops to be getting into that final. Yeah, and he knows it's important. Kokoro now as well reaches up. He's on the sloper, drops down. It would be so cool to see a top of this. <gasps> Great to see him getting high, though, and importantly, get in that zone. Yeah, you're right. Still no one topping that boulder. Let's have a look at Paul and his top. So this is on M4. Really held on to that note, actually, for quite a while. Didn't swing through it like some of them have done. Yeah, really powering through his biceps, using them to pull himself across. This is his second attempt, so fast work for him. And then let's see what he does. He's super top. confident, really pouncy. No feet, then brings the feet back. Shoulder moves. But you to saw finish. he got that power, he was fast, he was strong through the movement, got nice and high, no hesitation as he set up for it. Sorry, a little hesitation as he set up for it, and then as soon as he was moving, no hesitation, straight to those two holds, which is exactly what you need. It is hard to imagine how bad those holds are. You know, the left is is a sloper, the right is just a flat volume. You are just com like pure pushing between those holds. Okay, Kukuro Fuji has two and a half minutes to go. You can see that yellow square down there. It's just to stop the athletes from smearing on the wall, making it a little bit harder for them at the start of this boulder. And that strength you were talking about earlier. Yeah, this is the robot star, <laughs> that's it. It's just he just made it look easy when no one, no one else has been able to pull through. Yeah, it's like he engages a gear that others don't have. But foot out onto that terrible foothold, but making the palm down work. Interestingly, he's palmed on the inside, so if he hasn't twisted it... Oh, I mean, to do that bump like that, the finger strength required would have mm -hmm. been massive. That's the move, that's the bump, that's, that's what he wants to do. If, if, if he can, I don't think he'll be able to match in. I wondered whether that would work. It doesn't seem like it's possible. The holds are just too bad. The foothold's not positive enough. The black hold is too slopey. Um, he opted to turn his fingers in on the palm and not out, which I think meant when he bumped, he didn't have as much kind of control with the backhand. Um, so we'll see if he's able to get back up there. It's incredibly difficult to get up there, but if he can turn his palm out, it might allow him to have more control when bumping to the last hold. Um, the last hold isn't in cut. It's um, kind of like a rounded edge. So it's not a given when you hit it, you know? It's, you need to keep the tension, get the feet, foot placements, and then you can come into match. Yeah, and he's brushing the hold here. I mean, I think he knows that this is one he can get. He's so close to that. And if he can get it, this is going to make a big and difference. And you can see the focus in his eyes here. Yeah, he wants this. And he might want to prove a point to... Uh, selectors as well and I think there's a lot of Japanese athletes who have sort of got, got that feeling that they're trying to show something or, or, or prove a point because there is such a big team there. There's that side you know it's obviously I think they're, they're incredibly respectful of the selection process and I do believe it's quite clear for them but also when it is a selection process like that and you you don't get to do the events you want to do you want to make the most of it yeah. you know he's here to go climbing and really showcase what he's capable of not just not to anyone, I don't think, to himself more than anything. Yeah, I mean, he won't want to go home yet, will he? So, so strong. Right, now this is 
the business end here. Right hand up. He's going to palm down and Again, go for this bump. Fingers are in, so I hope he can keep the tension here. Oh, what a swing. <laughs> oh, big scream from him. He knew how close that was. I think if we gave him a, a little rest and another attempt, we'd see a top there, but that's the game. That ball has gone forever, and that's something that's hard to let go of sometimes, you know? You don't ever get to try these again. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. I would sit in, in bed at night and just like have it replaying over and over in my head. I've been asked um, many times about like my own climbing through competitions and, and some success that I've had, you know? And I honestly think it's one boulder at a time and letting that boulder go once it's gone, you know, not, not holding on to it. But it's just so impressive that you and these athletes have that mental ability, you know, and it's so much pressure in these climbing competitions. So it's, I mean, and it's, it's something that the more athletes I talk to, the more athletes are using climbing psych you know, psychologists mm -hmm. and sports psychologists. Yeah. And it's, it's, it feels like the whole sport is stepping up to where it should be, you know, that level. For sure. I, and... It takes a whole team to get these athletes to where they are. Um, often some do it on their own, but most athletes have a really strong team around them and a lot of support and they're individual athletes, you know, often they are obviously climbing for a country, um, but their team will be personal and specific to them. And I think that's a really, really important. Yeah, everyone different, everyone needing different treatment ways through these competitions. Yoshiyuki out on his first boulder. Ooh. Well, flying through the first boulder is Yoshiyuki. A little bit too quickly for that last move. And the first time we've seen that last move dropped. Yeah, oh, good point. Yeah, most people getting it, or well, everyone getting it first time when they've got through to the zone. Yoshiyuki's lowest finish in a World Cup this year was 16th and Tomoe's was 11th. <laughs> I was looking through. Um, yeah, mad stat that, isn't it? Just so, so strong. Jakob on his last climb, and he is currently outside of the final place. We, I definitely think we could see a top here from Jakob if he can keep it together. Again, not someone who's normally a fan of the this first the first move, so the jumpy style. Um, he's there wiping his hands as well. You know, I don't think he's a fan of that no texture. I feel like we might have be having a chat about that in the athlete commission. Nothing's a fellow <laughs> athlete commission member. Um, It'll be interesting to see his thoughts on that, but to Moa yeah, he's on in. the slab. Gets the fingers matching. Tips of his fingers. It's important to note that any part of the hand, so like the tips of his fingers count to match that. It just has to be in control. He's checking with the judge to make sure it's all good. Yeah, and it is a, it's a judge's decision, that one. Of course, it can be subjective. We have this appeals process, but yeah, it's a tough job those judges have to make that decision. Sam Abazu doing some climbing. He looks surprised to leave the stage so quickly on boulder one. He's <laughs> having to do a little bit more on boulder two. Trying a few different methods again. Um, it really seems to be stumping the athletes here, this middle section, a lot of them, um, apart from Kokoro. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jakob's skin is interesting. He was doing that a lot on the first couple of climbs as well, and he keeps chalking up, so maybe struggling a bit with friction. I think everyone's struggling with friction on the no texture hold map. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good point, yeah. I mean, it is getting warmer and warmer, as you said earlier here in the stadium. I mean, the more shouting, the more people f filing into the stadium, it increases that humidity, the heat. And as the athletes go through the round, you know, that their emotions, their adrenaline, everything's getting heightened. Um, so they're going to be getting hotter and it's going to be getting more intense for them as well. And I think Jakob knows this is important. Yeah, if he could get through to the finals, I, it, well, I'll be very excited anyway. So he's dancing over to the right. Sam Avazu is looking a bit confused on boulder two. Hasn't figured it out yet. In a minute and a half to go. Mikel Mawam right at the top of the leaderboard. What a round for him, having those three tops and that, and that zone. Yeah, so our top six starting to take shape. Adam Andra is still in it. Nikolai Uznik's had a good round. Mikhail Mawam seems like he's... Um, able to really switch it on for the big events when it really counts. Yakov getting through that for the first time through that start on the fourth boulder. It would be big if he can get this top. It would be really important. Massive moments for Yakov, but that's oh. not going to be it. Seems like the easier method here is to do the one, two to the top, but it's, it's, if you don't see that, then, you know, the obvious way looks like what Yakov just tried here. Um, but I do think he would find it a lot easier if he can commit one, two to the finish. Well, he's in again. Look, final move for Jakob once more. So he's locked in Big that commitment. first sequence. 
A little hesitation there. Spinning around, 30 seconds for Jakob, he'll go again. Sam Avazu won't though, he's left. You can hear in the background, you know, the athletes, the coaches, everyone getting behind him. He knows, they know how important this boulder would be if he can get a top. And similar to Jack, he keeps going. He, and 10 seconds, I think, oh, he's going to go again. All right, eight seconds, Jakob, do something special for us. But it's not going to be seventh position for Jakob. And Jack just behind him in eight, you know, both athletes super, super close. Ah, oh, it's a thing of fine margins, this semi-final. Ah, oh, it's heartbreaking at times, heartbreaking. And we're, we're on to our last athlete, just like that. Serato is about to come out. So the transition goes, where are they? We're looking for the right-hand side, Mechi runs on. Ah, oh, where are our athletes? Oh, no, sorry, because we're... we're going through on we, we're uh, we're running out of athletes now so we don't get four so Mechi brushes the ball yeah we're just trying to work this out here whether that should be the case but we'll wait and see meanwhile Mechi will make sure the holes are nicely brushed four minutes 20 he's taking his time before getting underway here And now he will sit down on this blue starting position box. It's great to get a good look at this move and then look at that hold. And you can see the athletes that go to this hold knowing what to expect and the ones who are a little bit surprised. And they've all had the same kind of look at the holds. But um, yeah, I think it, it's not something you come across very often. No, it isn't. Yeah, uh, and it's just to sort of tease things that might be something quite special planned for the final involving, involving those holds so you'll have to come and join us later on to see that Kokoro Fuji has a look to the left he's already thinking about the final sequences can people a little teaser there Matt a little bit you know, I'm just a little just cliffhanger making sure they all come back exactly they're, they're better <laughs> and why wouldn't you I mean this is the competition of the year it sure is of course next year we have the Olympics this year it's the world champ, so this is what everyone has been talking about all year. It feels like I've, I've said the world, world championship so many times, <laughs> and finally it is here, so uh, it's exciting. And what a place to have it, you know, like the whole city has got behind this event. You see the posters everywhere having the opening ceremony go through the city centre. Um, Switzerland is a strong climbing nation, so much knowledge in this crowd, and you can feel that, I think, when you're on the wall, but also when you're in the crowd too. I saw a tram decorated in, in the colors of the world champs. I did too, town. yeah. Super exciting for everyone. Kokoro is sitting in 13th, stretches that right hand up the wall, gets the heel in now, he's got to trust it. And then, oh, beautiful from him. Great hip positioning on that step across there. And See the tension going through his legs. Oh. Was that a slight leg bar? I think it might have been, yes. It almost I mean, looked like he tucked his leg behind the yeah. hole very slightly. And for, considering how many athletes we've seen sort of shaking their way across into it, he was really confident yeah, standing really up. Yeah, really strong in his legs, really strong through his hips as well. Um, great core tension and confident in his ability to hold that position. So he is done. He goes with two minutes. And right now, Mechi makes the jump. Straight into the jug there. Yeah, and then a bit of an adjustment. And let's see what he does here. Will we see him go one or one two? I think for Mechi, he's a much taller athlete. He could definitely do the beta that we saw Adam do. So throwing over to the black hole and keeping tension with the left foot. So not having to hold that barn door, that big swing that you're seeing most of the athletes having to hold who are going one hand. I do also think Mechi's easily strong enough to hold it if he goes one two. So kind of that really quick move to the top hold, um, which is much more shouldery but whether he's seen it or not is a different question. Yeah, well, he's got a minute 20 to figure this out. Or Doesn't work out seem to be ways. taxing him on the start. You know, at least that hold's taken no skin. That's, that's true, yes. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's one of those moves where once they have it, you know, it's a coordination style thing. Once they've got it locked in, it's, it gets easier. So let's see what he does this time. Although not under pressure, as we saw earlier. No, true. Went for the double and then Went on the right the hand. Went for double, but not from the palm. So if he can do the double from the palm, just connect those two methods together, <laughs> I think we'll see a top. 
but the clock's counting down and we've seen athletes previously you know as that clock starts ticking down it all starts to kind of come a bit disjointed and the wheels come off a little bit so hopefully we don't see that now and he can keep it together for the start move wow he's got 36 seconds on the clock his final boulder of this semi-final jumps in making that look so smooth nice, now really nice let's see if he can combine everything left foot up he's going direct no palm Touched it, but no, no go. It's going to go again. <laughs> yeah, this is the mad rush, isn't it, that we've been seeing. Yeah. Out and in, I think. Oh, he's going to go again. Ten seconds left. He pulls and back why off. why not? Uh, no oh. buzzer beater this time. Not this time, so he will leave the stage. So I do believe there might be an appeals process underway. We didn't see an athlete come out on Boulder 2 there, um, which I believe would have been Yannick. Um, and we haven't seen Serato start yet. So we'll see what happens here. The two athletes under appeal are still in yellow on the app. So we'll see this time. Here's Yannick on Boulder 2. Yeah, occasionally when they bring an athlete back, they have to, uh, they have to leave gaps in order to fit that into the schedule. So that's what might have happened. Mm -hmm. And we do see Yannick now, and there we see Serato. Now, Serato, I mean, I interviewed him right at the beginning of the season, and he was this 16-year-old <laughs> kid coming from Japan, and I thought, you know, yes, he's another Japanese athlete coming yeah. through. We'll see what happens. But what a season he's having. We saw what happened. Yeah. 2023 overall winner for Boulder. Yep. Very good in the lead rope. And that's Sam Avazu, his sister, having a good comp as well, coming from a big climbing family. Eyeing up that left hold. Make sure the feet are secure on it. Hits the palm down and then needs this foot match. He just finds the balance and point on. Great climbing. Keep an eye on that scoreboard as well. Paul jumped sixth position. And Sam is eyeing up the sloper trying to figure out the sequence through here. I think he's going to kick. No, he's palming. Wow, so he adjusted the right heel and then he actually tried to step through, which we haven't seen an athlete try yet. Really interesting that he thought that might work because the left foot is so terrible. Um, it just shows that he's really creative in like thinking on the wall. I think we'll see him definitely adjust that method this time, but he's definitely got a feel for it now. He's back on the wall already. Yannick got super high on um, M2 just then, getting the zone, which is going to be really useful for him. Um, so hopefully we'll get to see him get back up there. Yeah, Yannick shakes out, trying to get the pump out of his arms. Sam Abazu stepped forward. Will he do that method again? And then Serato is in for the final. No, sorry, Tomo is in for the final move. Up in the left, misses the palm. So we wait, Tamara Narasaki pauses, looking up at the wall. Mikel Mawam, it, it, it's just incredible he's at that top spot. What a round, what and a we've round. seen him really perform well at major events, like I said earlier. We've seen him really high up on the leaderboard previously at really important events, and it's so impressive from a, a headspace to be able to just turn it on and a training perspective. and. Yannick's strength also insanely impressive here. Yeah, look at this. He's onto the final moves, but he's got this barn door star move. He's doing this palm. Oh, foot slip. It's unforgiving, that boulder. Relentless right to the very, very end. They didn't, they didn't let up on that one. No, they did not. And fairly... A little bit scary up there as well, because you're kind of committing to that big bump and a swing. So Sam runs up again. So Yannick rests on boulder two. Sam Abazu wants to brush on boulder three. Samoa again launches up palms down and pushes away. It's interesting to not see a quick top on this one from Tomoa. I would have expected it. I don't know if it's the pressure building, if there's something going on that's meaning he doesn't feel comfortable on this, but this is a Tomoa boulder, I would say. You know, he's kind of the, the bringer of the new style in many ways. You know, he was the first to be that super springy, confident, like 
almost aggressive in a really delicate way um, to words that you wouldn't normally put together. Um, no, it's a great way to describe it, actually. It's not seeing the sequence on this top move, not something that we're used to seeing with Samoa. Yannick. Oh, <laughs> rotating through Couldn't, slowly. I don't think we could get any closer. No, that was almost it. And he was he was so slow in coming into that match that he had time to try and figure out to try and find something to save him from the barn door. That's him swinging out a lot like a barn door does. Um, but yeah, it wasn't enough. He is getting back on, which I do think in his head he's going to think people have topped this boulder. He's going to think it's important. He needs it. And in actual fact, nobody has. Getting the zone is super important for him. Um, I hope that this doesn't have an impact on the next couple of boulders he can reset get a good rest um, he's done a lot of climbing there sampling back on and with just 10 seconds to go yeah all action here sam creeps down he's got four seconds he'll hear the buzzer he's not going to get this and he drops down and has a little moment of frustration there on the stage and has a cheeky look over on the right as well as he'll leave you can see the speed wall there no holds on it yet because the some of the power routes later on in the competition will be set on that speed wall. The speed athletes turning up around about the 7th. That's when they're scheduled to arrive. Kokoro Fuji on M4, his last boulder of the competition. Making sure of that. And now I think finally we do have Serato on stage. We'll be waiting for him for a bit. Kokoro making sure that everything's clean and ready for him. He's also got two two tops um, so this is going to be really important and he does have the zone on the second boulder so I've, I'm going to put it out there if he can get a top on this I would say we'll see him in finals all right so it's starting to take shape Serato after a bit of a delay we thought he was coming on he wasn't because of this appeal that's been going on in the background now he's underway and look how smooth that is so impressive he looked a little bit sh like he looked like he didn't quite hit the holes perfectly, but it did not matter. He's got this look on his He's face. He's on another though. level. He is, that's it. And it's the calmness in his face. It's just like, okay. Calmness in his face, but calmness in his body. Mm. So he's incredibly strong, incredibly relaxed, and he kind of puts power and tension through his body at the exact right moments to ensure that he's kind of climbing the most efficiently um, of any of the athletes on the stage, I would say. And we saw that in qualification. He finished with five tops where, you know, many of, I think, well, the only athletes finished with five tops in his group and athletes coming way, way behind him in number of tops, so yeah. We go. Really showing dominance in the qualification round, so it'd be great to see what he does here. Yeah, it will be. I mean, he's just another level at the moment. Yoshiyuki, he will enjoy this kind of a launchy move. And he's also one of the strongest athletes out there, showcasing that right here. Crazy strength, that contact ability to pitch that. Right, he's on the slopers, looks to the right. Just a little, he's got to trust that bad right foot there. He's going to palm he's got down. That palm down focus in the eyes he oh. kept the palm facing his fingers facing out there um which i thought was going to be the better method but having seen um athletes on that move now when they turn their palm with their fingers facing in it means that they can get way closer to the wall we're seeing jack on the slab right yes now. so it was jack is under the appeal and it's his, uh it's the time on the clock so he's been given a certain amount of time to do it cockerel gets it done on on the final climb and so yes it, the finals for him we think we'll check it, but... I don't want to speak too soon. It puts him in, you know, he's in sixth right now, but the top's not registered. So when that top registers, we'll see where he is. He'll definitely be in the top three because he has three tops, four zones. Um, so it looks, looks definitely possible. It does, and he had a big fist bump up but to the audience. Look at Jack. So Jack, this was the appeal. So something happened with this boulder. So earlier when I was saying, I, it looked like his hand went near the black tape. And I said that when he was climbing, I don't know if that was the appeal or not. Um, it could have been his match. It could have been his start. Um, there's many different things that the, the coaches can appeal. Um, the rules are a lengthy document. I um, wouldn't say they're the most um, exciting read, uh, but there are different things that the judges can appeal. Yeah, so that would have been... Uh scoured over by the judges and the coaches and Jack is climbing again so he's repeating this now he knows what he's doing and psychologically it might be quite good for him you know it's, it's another chance to do something and 
Let's see if he can put it together. I mean, he topped this boulder. You know, I don't think he would. <laughs> yeah, true, true. He would be choosing to get back on that wall. I uh, really hope we can see him top it. He really is impressive in his movement, I would say, Jack. Well, he's got one. Oh, he's crimping the top of it. Uh, oh, well, it makes sure fair, of it. Fair play. Yeah, I mean, that shows his strength. I mean, you look, first senior semi-final, to do that, to come back onto the stage, that shows real maturity from him. Uh, the exact word I was going to use, maturity, and, yeah, I think he can take a lot away from that one, a lot of lessons learned. Yoshiyuki just toe-hooking around the edge of the wall. You see, on this side of the wall, there is no black tape, so they can use the edge of the wall. Um, I believe it's defined as where the climbing surface continues, you can use it, and then if there's black tape, obviously, that means no. Um, but... Good creativity from Yoshiki trying to make that toe hook work. Yeah, and he did grab the back of his neck there as he landed. It's kind of easy to almost whiplash yourself sometimes. So hopefully he's all right. He was a little bit gingerly walking off the stage there. Uh, I think that might be more to do with the fact that he didn't get the top, in all honesty. <laughs> he's going to be very frustrated. You know that you, these athletes will feel beat up after this round, but it's hard to feel too much when you're out there. I think the adrenaline pumping, you know, you, you'll feel little niggles and whatnot. Um, and of course, there's injuries that happen, but yeah, he looked more frustrated than anything else there. Well, we're looking at the scoreboard now. Adam Andre in sixth place is in the danger zone. Max down at the bottom. Toby disappointing round from him, just one zone. And Serato is down there because he's only done one boulder. So still lots of climbing to go here. Sam Abazu runs on. Yannick Floey is on the left. Now, Yannick, I talked to Yannick's coaches uh, yesterday because Yannick's had can sometimes get frustrated with himself. He can get into his own head. And his mm -hmm. coach was telling me how calm he is this week, that he feels good out there. Yeah, so I've been hanging out with him in the Adidas Terex hub, and um, he just seems so content, yeah. I would say. Um, he's really confident. He was very excited after qualification. He topped two slab boulders. This year, he has not topped a single slab boulder until the qualification, so he was absolutely buzzing. Said he felt really strong. Also had a great lead round yesterday. Um, looking smooth and confident again. Yeah, and it's good to have him in that space. Almost like too smooth and too confident Yes, there. a little too casual. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bit nervous. Yeah. Quick right. work from Sam on the start of this boulder. Yeah, an easy and work. End. Again, French style. We've seen all of the French athletes, I believe, apart from maybe Paul, opt for this one, two, three. Um, so hand, hand, foot, and really, really fast work from him. Yeah. And an important top. It is indeed. He has a look as he leaves the stage. We stick with Yannick here. That's what he's standing. That's the stacked jib underneath I was saying earlier, just to increase the height of it. So now left hand. You can see as well over time through this round how that hold has changed colour, the hold he's standing on. So it was yellow, it's now black, the rubbers were like kind of coming off onto the hold, changing the texture of the hold slightly. It's the nature of the game. I don't know how he slab climbs in glasses. I wear glasses and it's, you know, the scratching away on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> I, I completely agree Impressive. with you. I imagine they fall off as well. But he always does. Manuel Healy as well always walks on with glasses and mm. tends to take them off. Yeah. I think we saw Manu throw his glasses on the slab earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think in um, I don't think they were getting in the way though. I think that might have been frustration again. <laughs> Alright, well we're nearing the uh, the end of our competition here this afternoon. There is our Swiss crowd enjoying things, party like atmosphere here in the stadium. Sam's top on Boulder 4 there bumped him into seventh place, so he will miss finals. So we're seeing athletes get with two tops, um, some in finals currently uh, in fifth place, all the way down to 14th. So those attempts and those bonuses really matter. Oh, Yannick had a moment there, nearly dropped the right foot with the foot match. Now he stands up more in control, big adjustment again. You can see he's being very aggressive in that movement there, um, which is quite feisty as he goes for that hold, which, meaning it's really difficult for him con to control where his shoulders and his hips are, so two heavier parts of the body that you want to keep nice and tight into the wall. If you can slow that down, be less aggressive, keep those body re his body really close in, then I think he can kind of hit that finish position in the right body position. Yes. That, hopefully that made sense. That did make sense, so I'm, I'm totally with you. <laughs> Yannick crosses with the right foot, drops down with the left. Sitting in 15th at the moment. Finds the left hand. Better on the foot match now.
it's less aggressive, but still a bit of a throw. So you're seeing him come to the right in order to chuck his hips left. What we, I think we would want to see is more of a stable position and then a step as opposed to a throw. Yeah, it, it certainly seems the ones who are doing it more slowly, that move, they're having a higher success ratio on it. And the rest of the boulders kind of in the shadows there, waiting for the athletes to come through. And Yannick is alone with all eyes upon him. And throughout this week, it's a, it's a very packed schedule. You can check out the schedule on the IFSC website. And there's constant updates on the Instagram pages and social media. So have a look at that if you want to know what is going on in the next couple of weeks. Yannick drops down again. Adam Andre right in the dangers at the moment. He's going to be nervously watching on. Yannick is in now. Such great work from Yannick. Really cool to see. I hope he can keep it together here. He's eyeing up that last hole. One hand in the air and loses the balance. Oh, what oh, a big frustration. Kick. And Lena there has a little smile. So Yannick leaves. And that, that is the other side of Yannick. That although he's calm, sometimes he just gets frustrated and, and does things like that. And then it tends to affect the rest of the competition. And who doesn't? You know, it's, it's an intense environment. He knows he can top that boulder. He knows that it was a small mistake in his movement. Like these fine margins, they're, they're hard to manage. Both the physical aspect and the mental aspect, like you're saying, like coming off the wall and having all of that emotion like raging through both good and bad we we see it a lot in sport and you know that's why these athletes are here because they put everything into it it's like they, they didn't just turn up you know they've been fighting they've been working they've been training really hard this is the biggest event of the year um for a little slip or a little wobble to kind of put you out of a round it's it's hard to deal with it is I mean and we're talking hours and hours in the gym I mean you know 40 plus hours some of these guys just doing so many things the, sac the sacrifices as well I mean you know more than <laughs> more than anyone how much you have to sacrifice to be at this level so yeah you see a small snippet maybe on the screen here or on social media but yeah what they will be putting their bodies through um, in training and then at this event, especially those going for a combined place, Olympic, an Olympic spot, it's it's a lot to endure. It is, exactly. So we're fully behind them all. And Serato bubbles the feet. He looked uncomfortable. So he hit that high right hand um, and he looked back down and it almost looked like his hand was really insecure. Um, he dropped straight down, pointed up for a brush. Um, so hopefully he can kind of figure out a better position on that next time. Yeah, so he's getting his boulder cleaned. Yoshiki drops to the left. And we've got liquid chalk, we've got brushes, it's all go down on the mats there. And those bags that the athletes carry on, you can take stuff onto the mats with you, can't yeah, you? Yeah, usually you want a different pair of shoes, often a different style. So if you're wearing stiff shoes, you'll have your soft shoes in your bag or vice versa. Or maybe you have a pair that are more broken in or a little bit bigger or, you know, something slightly different. Um, so if you don't feel secure on a foothold, you can you can change them out. You'll have maybe some water because it gets really hot and you get out of breath and longer boulders, uh, liquid chalk, maybe a sander, some tape, you know. People have all different things in there. Um, yeah, and, it, and totally individual. I love finding out what's in an athlete's yeah. bag. You know, the little Maybe secrets. they don't want to tell you the secrets. Yeah. No, exactly. Tricks of the trade. Yeah. All right, Yoshiki, what will he do this time? So he tried to go down He'll with the left up. palm and the right. He will chalk up. Casual. <laughs> He's doing the same thing and holds it this time. Great strength through the, the shoulders there. This method leads to a much more precarious position you having you have to fight to get back out of it as we've seen a huge reaction you can hear we'll watch a replay of that in a sec where you just caught it Serato topping out m2 and we'll watch a full replay of that in a second i'm sure but good work from Serato. What a oh, hang on, is it M2? So that's M2, that's, that's our M2. Third, very first top. Wow. Very first top. I was casual then. I should have hyped it more. It's a massive moment for Sarato. I was wondering, I was like, wow, Matt, just, you know, no big deal. No. <laughs> well, awesome work. Unsurprising, though, you know, after the, the year he's had and the competition he's having, what an incredible climb. I can't wait to see it. Oh, here we go. This is it. First one to get M2 done. 
So he's underneath, one arm's through. Again, just so relaxed his body. He'll be keeping the setters happy, doing the intended Vita right there. High heel, making that really terrible handhold work. Oh, I can't wait to see this final move. So he matches it, pinching, trying to find some friction on the sloper. It's interesting to see him having to figure it out on the wall, you know, really working hard. Standing on the crimp, which we've not seen anyone else do. Ah. So that's a big difference. He didn't turn the palm. He matched, which I, I wondered would, would it, if it would be possible. Um, but standing on that crimp allowed him to get the height in his hips to make that match work into the last hold, super casual. Um, yeah. It's funny, you watch that and you think, what was the problem? Yeah. You know, why hasn't why isn't 19 other athletes yeah, done it? Easy. Yeah, but people sit at home thinking, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's a difficult one to convey that when you see some of these holds and moves on screen. So Yoshiyuki, oh, that looks awkward with the shoulders. Needs to bring the left foot up. Good work from Yoshiyuki, figuring that out, persevering with his, his beater, but making it work for him. Big foot slip, sent so it down. So his foot slipped then, I think, because he was putting so much pressure through it. So he was pulling as opposed to pushing with his foot. It looked like he was really laybacking the handhold, pulling with that foot to try and keep the weight. Whereas if we can see next time, hopefully he'll start pushing down and moving his hips across. Um, and then hopefully his foot won't pop. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, he wants to put all that pressure down through the toes. Exactly. So he does, oh, yeah, he's making that work much better now. He's Left learned foot up. his method and he's really, again, showing the experience once you've figured something out, being able to repeat that. Again, pulling with that foot though. And he's going to run out of time. Eight seconds, a bit of frustration from him. 17th at the moment. He has a, a look back. So we are. Having a look at the scores for you as well, trying to work this out. It's always uh, difficult as we near the end of the competition. Who's going to jump over who? Hands waving in the air there from our crowd. We're seeing Adam Andre still clinging on to that sick play spot, but I expect he might have let that one go, seeing Serato with this, the top of M M2. So. <laughs> well, there is a lady who you might be familiar with uh, if you're watching this, Yanya Garnbrett. Uh, she's on very good form, two tops for the lead and a strong bold around as well yesterday. Watching in the crowd with her coach there. It's great to see everyone supporting actually. You know, you wouldn't excuse them from going away and having a day to themselves, but it's nice to have them in the stadium really cheering Really nice, on. yeah. And also it's important as an athlete to get a feel for what the boulders are like, the style, the wall, the crowd, the environment, like familiarize yourself a little bit. I think you'll see most athletes that will be competing um, on this stage, they'll be popping in just to get a feel, even if they're only here briefly. But like you said, a lot of them are sticking around. Um, yeah, because I had they, thought they of that. It's a show. really good point. Just because it must, you know, you can sort of get the nerves out of the way a little bit, you know. Just you get some familiarization with the environment, yeah. you know. You're not, there's not, as much new when you walk out on that stage then. You're not trying to take everything in at the same time. You've kind of got a little feel for it already. Which these guys didn't have because yes, they've competed on the lead wall already, but they haven't competed in the boulder wall. They haven't competed in the semi-finals. Um, they hadn't seen the boulder, like the boulders themselves, obviously. Um, well, we saw Yannick rubbing his hands on the wall then. And I wonder if it was to get a bit of sweat on his hands to help stick to the no texture hold. He hasn't chalked up yet, which I thought we'd see him do, which we're seeing him do now. And the reason he's chalking up is because he was rubbing his hands on the wall. So there's texture on the wall. Um, and instead of chalking up before pulling on, he yeah, rubbed his hands. So strong, but again, that barn door, you're seeing him big swing. I hope he figures out the one-two method on the end here, because yeah. Yeah, he can get this. Uh, it's interesting you say about the, uh, the moisture. Look, and he's wetting his fingers here. There's a very famous shot of uh, Jakob Schubert being caught on camera, slow motion, licking his fingers once, which was... Yeah, uh, <laughs> pre-COVID. <laughs> Pre-COVID, of course. And uh, yeah, just having a little bit of dampness there can help. And you saw Jakob there putting water on his hands. I'm, uh, Yannick, but yeah, I'm actually surprised that he is the only person to have done this. Mm. He's not... No one else we've seen licking their hands or putting anything on. That's why I mentioned like rhinos can spit earlier, not um, not it's personal not spit. 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 <laughs> no, I don't even know. If there's a rule that you're not allowed to do that. There definitely should be. <laughs> <laughs> Health and safety. Maybe. And it's working so well for him. Yeah, I mean, it makes so it well. look like it's got friction on it. So big it, difference. All right, now he does mean he has to spend some time getting chalk on his hands. That's though, true. Hey? 
All right, well, we saw him almost hold the barn door before. What will he do this time? Palm down to start with. Oh, he holds it beautifully. And now he has to work out the match, though. Easy for Yannick. Work. And I tell you, what, that is impressive, because the fact that he was frustrated after the slab, obviously, as we saw, to go yep. back, reset, and then send it is impressive yeah, stuff. Yeah, and to, to do that in a round is is a hard thing to do. Um, people will have different methods. You've got that five minutes sat behind the wall, so your rest period of time. Um, obviously, you get longer if you flash border because you get the extra, the extra time from your first five minutes. But being in that chair and what you do in that space is going to be incredibly personal really important to be able to walk out and then execute a different border in a different style not Yannick's favorite style again um, he's much more of a fan of the the climbing like basic strong pulling he's incredibly strong outdoors as well as indoors um, but yeah made light work of that and creative in his tactics too yes indeed so cool to see that is our top six as it stands Adam Ondra sitting right on the bubble position Serato coming for him though Nikolai Uznik, Mezdi Shark, Dohyan Lee, Kokoro Fuji and Mikael Mawam make up our top six as it stands Yannick Floe outside in seventh Mikael still holding on to that top spot Really impressive for I me. Mean, he's been coming. Serato's coming for him, I think. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a threat for sure. Alex May goes down in 15th. Jack McDougal, what round he had in 14th. And Manu as well. One thing we should definitely mention is that these results impact uh, the combined. So where they place in this event, regardless of whether you make the finals or not, this is going to have an impact on if you make it into the combined. So this could be really good for an athlete like Jack. We could see him in the combined event with this result. It's going to keep changing as the event goes on, what happens in lead, what happens in finals. So it's impossible to know, although I'm sure some maths geek will tell me um, that it's not. I say maths geek, maths wizard, I yes. should say. <laughs> not geek at all. I wish I could know all of that. <laughs> me too. It's, it's beyond me. I'm not even going to try. I think it's beyond most yeah. people. <laughs> but it's double points as well for world champs, which makes a difference. It is. I'm talking about the combined event here. Ah, so yeah. So maybe. yeah, so... These results will definitely impact the combined event here, but for sure it's double points going into the world ranking, which counts towards the OQS, the Olympic Qualifier Series happening next year. Um, yeah. Yeah, cannot wait for that. A very unique event. The three taking place, right, yes, next year. Yes, I don't believe the locations have been announced. No, um, I do know them. I'm right. Me too. Yeah, it's exciting. Like, are we allowed to say? I know. <laughs> we better not, but just trust us. It's going to be epic. Right, Serato is up on M3. Let's watch this as he makes his way across. We'll drop down with the left foot. Just 16 years old, first World Cup season. You mentioned he's a good league climber. He's won a League Cup World Cup this year. He's won a Boulder World Cup this year. There's not much left to tick off, is there? No, and I do think, I mean, watch this performance and him in the qualities. He might be the one to beat here. We did just see a foot slip, though. And it's interesting that we've seen foot slips for the last two athletes, and that can happen. You know, the holds do change, like I was saying. It's the nature of the game. Um, but it's important to note, and I think it's interesting. We see, can, can sometimes see more foot slips later on in the round as the foot, the foot, feet, the foot, the feet change. Yes, and I, I always wondered, I ask this all the time, and I'm always told I'm wrong, but for me, going out last seems sometimes like a disadvantage, you know, because you're, um, you know, you have that to deal with, you have the extra pressure, mm -hmm. but it seems every athlete I talk to really wants to be in that last position, regardless of how oh, things change. Oh, interesting, yeah. I never know if it's a tactic, you know, if someone's like, I'm not going to do this boulder because I don't want to qualify. You know what, I think maybe previously, in many years ago, that might have been the case. Um, when it was easier to figure out what was going on at events, sometimes you could see the scoreboard, so you could literally know what you needed to do. Um, but I don't think it's possible to do that anymore. I don't think you can tactically choose not to do a boulder and know you'll make it through. Look at that from Serato. And I don't think this guy wants to choose not to do a boulder. He wants to do every single boulder out there. He's just psyched to climb. Yeah, he's on it. And just always so calm. I don't think I've ever seen him. I'm sure he obviously does, but he just never looks pumped. He never looks tired. Mm -hmm. Let's so have com a composed. Yes, exactly that. Right, let's see uh, Yoshiyuki here. Dropped Almost out. fell into that position, but made it work. He did, and he's now in I don't know that seventh now or seventh later. We'll work that out in a sec. But up into the final move, presses into the box. So a flash of that boulder did not bump him into the final. It, um, 
Let's put him in seventh place. We see Adam Andre down in eighth now, Yannick in ninth. Oh, well, let's check the scores from 11th down. Paul Jemson in 11th down towards 20th, Max. Serato has already bumped himself into the final position, so he's in fourth. Um, well, there we go. M Mikel at the top, still unbelievable. Kokoro Fuji, Dokian Lee, Serato and Raku, Medzi Schalk, and Nikolai Uznik on the bubble. Adam Andre, as you said, down in eighth now. Yannick, good stuff from him in ninth. And Sam Abazu down in tenth position. So I... I'm going to put it out there. We've just seen Yoshiyuki on the fourth boulder, so we've just got Serato to go. So I think that is our finals list there. He's already in fourth position. He can change what position he's in. It looks like he's going to do just that. But I think our top six will remain our top six. But well, what a top six. Subject Two to appeals and any well, changes that I miss. And that's a really good point because, yeah, this is can change. And our broadcast will finish before the appeals process will finish. So just be aware of that if you're watching. Julia. Interesting set of results here, though. Yeah, I mean, it's. And look at those. Oh, yeah, Tomoa down as well. Just above his brother, Meichi. Tomoa, very used to being in a finals position. It is interesting to see him miss this final. I tell you what, I think Jakob Schubert will be uh, happy with that result as well in 12. Happy, but oh, I don't know. He was so close, you know, with yeah. that last boulder. He kind of tickled it, you know, he was. Almost in that final. Yeah, he's still have some work to do on the... Let's see a replay here. I love how we did this climb. That move especially. Casual. Just, just so cool to watch. And then this, and look how much pressure he's putting through that right hand. We've seen so many athletes fire off it. And look, he's adjusting on it. The perfect amount of pressure. Yeah. And then you look for the heel. And then we see him, you see his right foot as well, hits the wall, it's moving around so he can get his hips in the right position for this next move. Really mature climbing from such a young athlete. Yeah, very impressive. Only one to top boulder two. And you can see almost that he is a strong lead climber. He's able to hold positions, figure out what he needs to do, make those adjustments. Um, you can see his eyes moving around, like he looks for the foot immediately. He's comfortable in that position, able to bring the hand in, reaches out. This last hold is very, very poor, but you wouldn't know it. You watched him put that left foot down on the crimp, and you, you wonder why no one else did that. I think he's a, a shorter athlete. He's incredibly flexible, and he felt so secure on the hold. So all of that combination allowed him to stand nice and tall and high, which meant that when he got there, he didn't need to turn the palm to stay on the wall. He was able to stay composed, put that foot on, and then match him. But if you didn't feel good on that right hand, which none of the other athletes looked like they did, you, but getting the foot up would mean that your hips would tilt, so your pelvis would tilt, which would bring your weight in your shoulders back, and suddenly you'd be off the wall before the foot even made it up there. Whereas because he was so strong, there was no movement in that right arm whatsoever. He was super secure and able to bring that foot up. Sure, I don't know if I'm going too No, geeky. no, you're so, I was about to say, you're <laughs> so good at describing movement. Honestly, it's like I, I'm kind of like being drawn into your descriptions here. It's fascinating. It's I'm like, like you're mechanics. nodding at me, but is everyone at home just I, like, what on earth is she on about? No, no, you are, you are nailing it, honestly. It's, it's, it's so interesting when you do talk about it because you realize how much there is involved in it. And it, and it is just like a body mechanics thing you know everything uh, needs to click like, into place i think it's beautiful i think it's fascinating i i love movement i love watching climbers and seeing the really specific kind of choices that they make subconsciously and consciously um they're both different um yeah that's why i got so excited when we were reading the boulders i was like seeing all these possibilities and i think you were watching my eyes dart around yeah and like, i'm not gonna say anything now just in case save it for the live stream but uh yeah. yeah, I'm so just fascinated by it. It is one of my favorite parts of this job is we, we get that privilege of walking onto the mats, you know, and no one else can really do it. Mean, obviously, there's the judges and everyone who can, but I, I feel very privileged to be standing up I just feel like a huge there. privilege. I mean, when Frankie was zooming up and down the mats with a brush, like brushing all the footholds, I did find it quite comical. Um, she doesn't know how lucky she is. Yeah. Uh, did you post that story? I put it on my story okay. on Instagram. Go, yeah, go just and Frankie, check out like, Shauna's Insta. Brushing the foothold um, of... The final boulder, yeah. Well, she'll have that and forever And she brushed now. the slab footholds too, yeah. But well, she did a good job. I mean, you know, it's clearly worked. Yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> well, we're having a little pause here because as we go through this rotation, obviously we don't have four athletes out at the moment, so time is ticking through towards the next ones. 
Let's have a little look at Mika Mawam at the top of the leaderboard. This was impressive stuff. Real commitment on that I no I feel like we didn't talk about him as much as we should have done when yeah. he was climbing, but he, that's what happens when you do the boulders so fast. You're not on the screen very much, you know, and we saw him do such a great effort through this round, turning it up when it counts. Yeah, and this final sequence from him was impressive. He eyed up the launch, got himself set. Left hand, right foot, right palm. You can see what that meant to him. You, you saw the emotion, the scream on his face. It wasn't a move that looked easy for him, whereas we saw some of the younger athletes, the bouncy young athletes, like kind of cruising through it. He knew exactly what to do, and it didn't matter that he's like not from the new school generation. He can execute that just as well as they can, but you saw what it meant to him. He knew that it was important. I would guess he didn't know it was going to put him at the top of the leaderboard. No. Um, but well, what's, there he is, what's your style? You, do you enjoy that new school sort of jumpy style, or no. are you a bit old school? <laughs> There's a reason I don't compete anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I definitely learn to enjoy it and I learn to embrace it. And now I go to the climbing gym and I get quite excited having a, a try of it. Great, great example of the new school bouncy style. Um, just like having such flow and dynamic. Being dynamic yet precise, I think, is something that is incredibly difficult to learn and to train. Um, and we're seeing so many athletes, Medjdi included, um, just showcase that perfectly. Yeah, and, and it's been an evolution within the sport because, and I know a lot of people dislike the sort of people call it the parkour style of climbing mm -hmm. a bit, but you know, I think things change in sport and things things adjust, and, and, and we're seeing boulders perhaps you know at one point we had lots of parkour style and now it's going maybe back a little bit more old school again and we should talk about these boulders being a really great display of different styles we have the jump we have the parkour style we have the strength and power um and we have the balance and technical kind of slab uh we're seeing the athletes being forced to climb in their own way that really show their own strengths, but also expose their weaknesses. Um, Mejdi here, just really, this last move was one of the best moves of the round for me, the way he did that with such speed yeah. and precision. He knew exactly what he needed to do. He was so confident in his feet, like no foot pops, really like no questioning whether his feet were gonna stay on in the slightest. He trusts his shoes entirely. Um, yeah, that was, one of my favorite moments, I think, just that, that subtle hip movement. Appreciate that that's probably not something anyone else <laughs> saw, but I think that was a great a great move from Medjdi. Um, but yeah, this is a great set of boulders to showcase really different styles. And yeah, you know, the parkour style isn't for everyone, but it's cool to watch. Absolutely. And if you are ever at a climbing gym, you know some climbing gyms, the gym I train at in Sheffield always sets, um, the climb hangar, it sets easy, comp style boulders so everyone can get involved on them and that feeling when you hit a coordination jump or when you hit a cool dino it's hard to beat yeah, especially when it counts it makes you feel like a bit of a hero doesn't it when you're swinging around a lot of there. a hero yeah, yeah. even now, still now I, I do one and I'm like look around <laughs> to see who's watching see <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like oh I'm not at a comp right now <laughs> <laughs> now Serato's on his fourth boulder obviously he's Oh, hang on, let's just watch this. So quick he's learning there. Yeah, really that was quick. fast, wasn't it? Major adjustment in his movement. All right, so final move for the final boulder for Serato. So the question I have is, look, he's sitting in first position. He was in third before he'd even climbed the boulder. Yeah. Why wouldn't he just not bother and save some skin? He doesn't know. So, so he can't see the finals, scoreboard. In finals, we are able to see the score after you've completed a boulder. So after each boulder, you see kind of the rankings where they are at that time. Um, but Serato doesn't know where he is. Uh, the athletes and the coaches aren't allowed to communicate with him, uh, or the coaches aren't allowed to communicate with him. Um, so they can't tell him like, hey, stop doing this one. And also in finals, it might come back to count back. So this is a really important point to remember because if he did know, let's say he got caught a glimpse of a scoreboard or somehow somebody told him which they're not supposed to do um, then yeah he could tie and then that could make a big difference in the next round um, and I think there's many layers to this he's also an athlete who looks very driven and very focused he looks like he wants to climb every single thing you put in front of him no matter what it is um, yeah I don't think tactics matter for this guy it's not like he's getting tired 
No, that's a good way. It doesn't, or he certainly doesn't look it, does he? That he's getting tired. He's just very fresh, very yeah. 16 years old. <laughs> yes, <laughs> endless only. energy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's sitting in the top spot. He's got three tops in his own so far. The only one to top bowl the two. Brooke Rabatou recently said to me, um, I said I spent some time in Burr when I was 15. And she was like, wow, that was a long time ago. Oh. And I was like, thanks, Brooke. She's like, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Brooke's the sweetest person. <laughs> you can see her face. <laughs> the youth. They don't understand. Like, they thanks. really don't. She's like, it was a long time when I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> Serata, ah. though, is not quite holding the barn door yet, or the swing. We've seen a couple of athletes manage to stick that, but very few. Um, most opting for the one, two. And it's, it's quite curious as to whether the one two became much more popular later in the round and i wonder whether people caught glimpses of it happening um which can happen for sure so then suddenly you've seen someone do it in your peripherals or when you were looking at the clock or you know just being aware of what's going on around you um whereas serato obviously didn't have that yeah, and you could uh, see him for the first time really looking a little bit confused mm -hmm. as he's up. He's just trying to figure it out. In saying what I just said, you know, the French athletes all went for the one, two, three with the foot, not hesitating. I wonder if they've had a similar move in training. Um, they, the athletes do not ever get to try these boulders, but they will have coaches the, and route setters setting plans for them. They can um, do comp training. The one thing you can't train is experience. You can't train being yeah. out on the mat, but you can train the style so you can train competition style climbing um, doing the timing formats having all the people there, having judges kind of trying to recreate that environment as much as possible I know the French team do do that quite a lot um, it's we learning movements and if you, people can remember back to the beginning of the season in Japan there was a move that the athletes hadn't seen they didn't know how to do it Serato goes again and this time he holds yeah. it well he kept on going and eventually it worked for him and fascinating to see him really learn. That was he, his progression through that climb and his attempt was really impressive to see. He learned on every single attempt, took what he learned and executed even better and better and better until he was at the top. Awesome work. If you're not going to flash it, that's what you want to see. Yeah, <laughs> and it, you know, he kept going, looked a bit confused. Well, our audience will filter out. We're just going to get confirmation of the results. Remember, they might change, but we don't think so. We haven't really got any appeals on our score anyway, so this is likely to be it. Sarasa Anraku with four tops moves forward in first position. Mikhail Mawam second, Kokoro Fuji third, Mejdi Shalk, Dohyun Lee, and Nikolai Uznik in the top six. Great to see him back in the final. Mm -hmm. Disappointment from Yoshiyuki and Adam, so close, but so far. Very close, and also athletes like Jack and Jakob, you know, they, they're down in the results, but they were so very close to being in that final, um, as were some of the other athletes. So, yeah, it's gonna be a tough one to swallow for some of them, needing to reset because those athletes who are competing in lead or and or combined you know it's a long long event and there's still a ways to go there is indeed and um, we have got more action coming later on this evening so do come and join myself and shauna here for the immense final that's taking place later on cannot wait for that i can't, I can't wait to see wait. what bold is it i mean that was a semi-final i'm really impressed with this set of boulders um i think Yes, it's frustrating we didn't see many tops on the second, but it allowed the athletes to get creative. We did see athletes get in the zone and that being crucial. So although there weren't many tops, it was an important boulder. Um, and there wasn't, a kind of, there wasn't a given in here. No, it was tough all the way. Well, the athletes have done their jobs. We will return this evening for more climbing here in Bern. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Shauna, for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. We'll be back later on this evening. Good night, everyone. Well, good night, good afternoon, everyone. We'll <laughs> see you soon. See you soon.
see what he can do.